Ten seconds. I'd like to call tonight's Summers of Planning Board meeting to order. Anna, please call the roll. Chris Horton. Here. Ron LaHoulier. Here. Robert Belmore. Here. David Witham. Here. Jason Berry. Here. Mark Richardson. Here. William Barden. Here. Doug Haberman. Here. This time I'd like to appoint Mr. Haberman and Mr. Barden as full voting members for the evening. First item is approval of the minutes of the meeting of August 21st, 2024. Does anybody have a motion? Uh, motion to accept, Mr. Chair. Motion made by Mr. Barry. Second by Mr. Horton. Discussion. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Abstain? Abstain. Next item is uh, committee reports. Land use board reports, you have a summary, or is there, are there any comments by the board? Seeing none, we'll turn to the City Council report. Mr. Witham. Given the agenda this evening, I'll be very brief. Just wanted to report that uh, Laura Berry uh, is our new City Councilor. She won the special, spe special municipal election last week uh, to replace uh, technically Councilor Messier, though the spot had been interimly filled by uh, Don Austin. Uh, so she's now on the council. As you know, Laura Berry chaired the Historic District Commission. She can no longer serve in that capacity. However, uh, Mayor Girding has appointed her to the Historic District as the council rep in lieu of Councillor Goodwin, who has stepped down from that position. Thank you. Stratford Regional Planning Commission update. Mr. Richardson. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we'll be meeting again this Friday. Um, Nothing really new since the last time we've been looking at budgeting and we'll be, we will be looking at uh, the new fees that member communities uh, coming fiscal year 26, new fees that uh, for membership that communities will be paying, so. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Next, eyes on 30. 2030 committee. Mr. Barry. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, we have not met since our last meeting, and we're waiting on a new date for our next meeting. All right, thank you. Community Power Coalition. Mr. Horton. Yeah, uh, the committee has sunset. City Council has appointed Deputy City Manager, Finance Director as the city's rep, as well as the city manager as an alternate. Uh, so I got no further updates on the committee. Thank you. Housing Committee, Mr. Horton. Mayor's Housing Committee met last night. Uh, Councilor Goodwin gave an excellent presentation on the housing crisis, uh, the economic impacts of that, and uh, highlighted some of the uh, things that we as a city can do about it. So um, there'll be more discussions on that coming forward. Uh, at the uh, cap of the meeting, uh, we did talk about the ADU discussion we had as a planning board, and uh, Housing Committee is planning on meeting with the planning board at next month's meeting, prior to next month's meeting. Good, thank you. Old business, is there any old business that may come before the board? Director Mears. None this evening, Mr. Chairman. Next, we'll get into new business. Item A, Russ Amacombe is seeking a subdivision amendment to extend a culvert on a property located at 59 Milo Lane in the residential single family R1 district, assesses map 69, lot 2D9, Sub number 06, 2004. Director Mears, anything to add? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the applicant did provide some additional information that was submitted on Monday that's on everybody's desk uh, regarding a cross section for Milo Lane. Public Works has not had a chance to review this at this time. Um, applicant is requesting to extend the existing 12 inch diameter culvert from the, under the driveway an additional 60 feet, adding backfill and grass over the culvert. This lot is within the Cottonwood subdivision that was approved back in 2004. This subdivision was designed with an open space drainage or open drainage system and subject to the following conditions of, of approval. There shall be no covenants or there shall be a covenant in the deed that states the homeowner can't fill inside the roadside ditches. Application was reviewed at the 9-4-2024 SRTC. At this meeting, it was recommended that the applicant provide a cross-section design construction detail 
uh, by an engineer. It was also noted that if approved, the existing water shutoff can't be covered with the proposed improvement. Uh, at the time, uh, staff recommended that the board find this application as incomplete because the cross-section design was not submitted. Uh, so I think at this point, uh, Public Works will need to review this. Okay, so at this point, is the application is not ready? I, I think we could continue it to the next meeting if the applicant was okay with that. Mr. Amico? So you want to extend this another month or? Yes. Okay. Just for the record, just state your name and your address, please. Uh, Russ Amaconi, I live at 59 Milo Lane in Summer Source, New Hampshire. I'm the homeowner. Um, looking for an extension. I guess I, I, <laughs> I don't know at this point. Um, is this to make a final decision or what? What's the reason for the extension? Can you keep speaking to the microphone? I'm sorry. Please. Thanks. Okay, sorry about that. Good. Um, so you need another month for a decision, or is it something on my part I need to do? The Public Works needs a chance to review this uh, okay. additional information at this okay. time. Unless the board, the board could open it up. No. I mean, it's really, I don't know. It, I'm just trying to make it safer in the front of my yard. Um, it's just a short drop. If my front yard was longer, I wouldn't even be here. It's just that you walk out the front door, you have your sidewalk, and it drops. I'm just trying to even it out because the culvert is four feet in from the street before it starts to drop, almost five feet. And I'm just trying to fill that void just to make it safer all around. I mean, my grandkids are over all the time. It'll look nicer too when it's not filled in. I mean, I maintain my yard. I really love my yard. I moved up here in March. I'm looking to stay here until I'm no longer on this earth. I'm just trying to make the yard look more appropriate and appealing. I love a beautiful yard, but it's kind of hard to maneuver around. Okay, at, at this point, would, uh, you're just looking to see if okay with the... Uh, the board to continue, or you could open up the meeting. Mr. Will with them. Or deny. Yeah, this seems rather uh, de minimis, and I think it could be addressed in the field by Public Works Engineering. Is it possible that if we were to approve this, that we could approve it uh, conditional upon approval of Public Works Engineering staff? That could be uh, an option. At the time of the site review technical committee meeting, Public Works was not recommended an approval for this. So I would, um, I would, uh, I would, I would uh, be in favor of continuing to the next month's meeting with the um, with the expectation that Public Works does a site visit to inspect the uh, underground utilities, such as the water line, the water shut off, and uh, once he provides um, a memo with his findings, then we can move forward. So, uh, so I've reviewed your package. I, I think it's pretty straightforward. Right. Um, uh, I, I think we just need to do our due diligence to make sure that um, our utilities are protected. Okay, so I did speak with Mike two weeks earlier. They did come out and mark the water shut off on the front lawn. It's not in the way of the culvert. The shut off is up near the house. They marked it with a blue paint. It's not in the way of filling in with the pipe at all. At this point, is that a motion? Uh, that was a motion. I'll make the motion to continue to the next month's meeting, date specific. Motion uh, made by Mr. Horton. Is there a second? Second by Mr. Richardson. Discussion. Mr. Berry. Uh. I'm just filling it with dirt. I'm not building anything over it. I'm trying to make it safer. That's all. Okay. Motion made by Mr. Horton. Second by Mr. Richardson. Discussion, uh, Mr. Berry? Yeah, I, I think the only thing that's bothering me is that you, so you want to put an extension of a pipe. The problem is we don't know where it is. We don't know how far out it's going. We, we, we're having, a, it's, it's hard for me to approve something I can't see. Um, 
I, I get the intention. I, I, I know you're doing it in good faith and doing it for your for your property. I get that. Um, but we're, we're approving blindly. Normally we have a drawing set in front of us to tell us, even even sketched in, here's what we're approving. So um, I'm tempted to agree uh, um, with Mr. Horton on this one, regretfully. So uh, is it possible that we could get another, if there is a review, I, I agree. I think a memo coming from, from um, Director Babinski would be the way to go, saying it's okay, utilities are clear. Um, having just a nice, even just a nice little sketch saying, you know, here's the 60 foot pipe you want or how big the pipe you want. It's the same pipe that's already there. It's the foot in diameter, it's corrugated. I'm putting the exact same pipe down, just extending it across the front. It's two feet down, filling it in with dirt and, and seed. That's it. I'm not building anything on top of it. I'm just making it easier and safer. And it, it ends at the driveway. And hardly any water comes out of it now. So, I mean, if, if, if it was a flood zone, again, I, I wouldn't waste the time for anyone here. I know everyone's life is important, uh, include mine. But for the amount of water that comes out of this pipe, it's nothing. I'm just trying to extend it so it doesn't look like it was disturbed and it looks like it belonged there. I'm not going into the uh, culvert on the side. I'm going way before that. At least, yeah. Mr. Chair, with all due respect, I, I think we're Mr. delving Lynch. into some detail here. This is a discussion on whether we continue or not. And uh, if we don't want to continue, then I would allow the applicant to continue down this path. But uh, if we're going to continue it, then um, I'm any, not so sure that that's. Good point. Right. But Mr. Witham, any further discussion uh, as far as uh, continuing to the next month? I'm just trying none. To all those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? So we'll go to next month. Yes, yeah, the October 16th meeting. Who is in favor so for the record? Aye. And opposed? Mr. Barton, you, you're allowed to vote. Motion passes. Three two. Three two. So the next meeting, uh, give them the date. October sixteenth. October sixteenth. So once we get the uh, public works uh, input, so it's been continued till next month. All right. So basically, I'm waiting for Public Works to look at it, and then I'll be back here for the decision. Right. Well, we'll also open the public hearing to any. Uh, right. I'm just asking so I know what to expect as well. Yeah, we'll also be opening the public hearing to abutters and whatnot for any comments. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for your time. Thank you. Have a good night. Next item, 200 Main Street LLC is seeking site plan approval and a conditional use permit for a 148 unit residential building with associated parking infrastructure located at 200 Main Street in the Milliard MY District, Cesses Map 09, Lot 282, site number 06 2024, and CUP number 02 2024. Director Mears. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. The applicant is proposing to redevelop the property formerly used as the bleachery. Proposals include renovation of existing building, construction of two new buildings with underground parking, outdoor patio area, stormwater management, and other infrastructure. The proposed number of units is 148, a mix of one and two bedroom apartments. Applicant has been to two uh, SRTC meetings, uh, both in July and August, the first third party review of the traffic and drainage have been completed and they're included in your packet. And um, the applicant has sent revised plans with responses from civil consultants and they've been sent to Horsley Witten for a second review. The property is located in the Milliard District with form based codes overlay area five. Uh, it's a residential multi unit dwellings are permitted use in this district. See attached Milliard. The Milliard and Form Based Code District do not have setback or build two lines in this particular Form Based Code, and a four-story minimum is required for the building height. 
Just to note, this property is located within the ha New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services urban exemption area, which exempts certain shorelands along the Salmon Falls River from jurisdiction and requirements of the Comprehensive Shoreland Act. The applicant has received a favorable recommendation from the Conservation Commission at the August meeting. There are a number of waiver requests uh, with this application, uh, 10, which include a uh, formal CUP high intensity soils map, signs in the wetlands buffer delineating that. Uh, they're requesting for a reduction in the parking uh, spaces from 1.5 parking spaces to 1.3. Uh, granite curbing along the pedestrian way on textile lane. Uh, vehicular circulation, uh, landing within parking, one shade tree for every 15 feet, shade tree around the perimeter, sidewalk, off-site improvements, landscaping uh, buffer yard, uh, site lighting, and groundwater recharge on site. Uh, this application is complete and ready for the planning board to review. Entertain a motion to accept the application. So moved. Motion made by Mr. Witham. Second. Seconded by Mr. Uh, Horton. Discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? At this time, I'd like to invite 200 Main Street to their presentation. Mr. Goodwin. Thank you, and good evening. Paul Goodwin, Senior Development Manager with Timberg Properties. I have been Neil Verposa here of Civil Consultants, um, and we are here to present the proposal for 200 Main Street LLC um, for the project in your packet before you, located at 200 Main Street, which is actually uh, accessed off of River Street. Um, as mentioned in your packet, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, this was the historic Great Falls bleachery site. It was acquired by Chinberg um, in the early 2000s, and due to an unfortunate series of fires, um, a project has not um, been possible there until, until now. There's one small segment of the remaining complex uh, still standing, um, which we are hoping to save and uh, renovate and attach to it a new structure to get the economies of scale we need for the project to make sense. Um, and that, that building is uh, closest to the train tracks um, on the, I would say, planned south side of, of, of the plan. Uh, and we're constructing a new building uh, just across from it, a little uh, slightly closer to the river, um, uh, with another uh, 70 so apartments, again, to get the economies of scale. So 148 apartments in total. Uh, we have gone to the Conservation Commission uh, previously uh, for the conditional use permit um, we needed from them. Uh, the site is in the urban exempt zone from a stormwater uh, perspective. However, Summersworth uh, site plan regulations um, are more restrictive than the state regs on stormwater, so we needed to go to shoreline. shoreline excuse me. Um, so we needed to go to ComCom, and they uh, recommended approval for that. Um, in general, uh, I'll zoom up for a second just to give you some context on Chimberg if you're unfamiliar. So Chimberg has 30 some odd years of experience in um, mill adaptive reuse and um, uh, development, uh, uh, having done several projects here in the city, including Hilltop School, uh, the Canal Street Mill. Um, they've also done the Kachuka Mills in Dover. Um, the, Dover, the old Trafford County Co Courthouse in Dover is another recent example, and a similar project to this one in that uh, there was a historic building uh, that we were seeking to save at the heart of that project, um, but unfortunately that historic structure in the case of Dover and in the case of this project um, was too small to get the economies of scale required to make a project successful. So this project is, is uh, designed around uh, saving that last re remaining segment of the uh, bleachery complex. Um, Architecturally, the, the site, uh, we try to draw on sort of the industrial character of the site and, and New England vernacular um, with the siding choices and cornice uh, detailing. Um, obviously, it's transitioning from an industrial site to a residential site, so the landscape plan reflects that. Uh, one of the key features of the uh, site plan is the um, reuse of a historic building foundation of a building that burned down into a patio that will overlook the river. Um, and then uh, we will be providing uh, a segment of a river walk uh, along the river for the section of the riverfront that we control. Um, one of the waivers you'll see before you tonight is for um, 
a sidewalk uh, into the property. Um, unfortunately, this property does not have significant frontage and what uh, is currently a driveway is essentially becoming a private way, which will be called textile lane. Um, and that private way is not sufficiently wide to fit uh, a sidewalk in it. Um, so having a sidewalk with curbing is not possible, unfortunately. It is wide enough to fit uh, travel, traditional travel lanes and to accommodate uh, fire truck turning radii. Uh, it's just not wide enough for that sidewalk. And I will point to you preemptively, um, that is the same condition that exists um, elsewhere in town, specifically at 36 Canal Street, um, just here, the Canal Street Mill. Uh, it's, the same, it's the exact same condition. There's a private way, historic old uh, lane. Uh, obviously, the, that mill's got dozens of apartments in it as well as fully occupied with commercial tenants. Um, and for hundreds of years, pedestrians have shared that uh, access road in and out to Market Street um, with little or no conflict. Um, and we are anticipating the same to be true here. Um, we will be preemptively, you know, taking a little further, we'll be putting in signage and um, striping on the road to indicate that the lane is a shared space for pedestrians and vehicles. <coughs> the property will be well amenitized uh, for the, the apartments. Um, we are anticipating them to be mostly market rate. We're working through um, an agreement now uh, based on a grant that we received from the state. So there might be up to 10% affordable um, at 80% uh, area immediate income. So there'll be some component of workforce housing here most likely. Um, all right, so that's sort of the high level overview. Uh, I will give it to Neil for the more technical side. All right, uh, thanks, Paul. Uh, Neil Raposa, civil consultants. Uh, and I think Paul did a really good job uh, explaining the project. Um, as far as the tech technical aspects here, we're uh, planning on uh, bringing in new utility lines uh, from River Street, uh, as opposed to trying to utilize uh, the existing aged uh, utilities uh, that have traditionally come in from the railroad side of the project and the GE uh, building. It's all gonna be uh, uh, you know, new and up to code uh, connections for this, for this new development. Um, as far as uh, state permitting, uh, we did, we had an early meeting with uh, DES, New Hampshire Department of Environmental uh, Services, and they indicated that it was an alteration of terrain uh, project, so it had to go in for the full alteration of terrain permitting, but it fell under their redevelopment rules, uh, which basically means you have to treat everything, but you can treat it to uh, you know, a lesser, lesser standard than a brand new development. Uh, we have gone uh, kind of above and beyond what they were requiring uh, and treated it to a little bit higher higher percentage than, than they require, but it's it worked best for how everything laid out and how we could uh, capture that stormwater before it got into the, into the river. Uh, it's uh, currently, there's one section of the, of the site that's gonna drain uh, directly into the Salmon Falls River, uh, as opposed to currently the entire site just drains down to the river and seeps through that wall there and goes out. Uh, so there's a small portion that's gonna be going out through a controlled sluice way there. And then the remainder of the uh, site will be uh, treated and and sent through uh, the existing stormwater management system uh, that outlets in that that big 60-inch um, pipe uh, further down the river. Um, that is still in process at DES. Uh, we're still awaiting their review comments and approval. Uh, I expect those uh, within the next few weeks. Um, the vast majority of of uh, everything else that has been uh, you know, explained by uh, by Michelle and Paul. Uh, I think they hit most of the major points. Uh, so I'm happy to answer any questions that you guys have and and walk you through whatever whatever needs to be uh, whatever needs to be discussed. I don't have the board, so I'm going to try to do everything digitally. Don't always work. Here's the overview, overview of the site development that we've, we've put together. 
Um, this is the is the existing uh, existing building that's going to be going to be saved and reused. Uh, this is that addition that Paul was describing uh, to to gain the additional units that we need to make it viable. Um, both of these buildings. This is another uh, new building. It's going to be in the place of uh, several of the old uh, mill buildings that were on the site previous to this. Uh, here is that that uh, open patio that was uh, now just the remaining foundation wall and slab of one of the older buildings. That's going to get rehabbed and utilized as that outdoor patio area. Oops, sorry. Thank you. And so uh, this is the main uh, the main road coming in. It's it's. Uh, basically going to remain the same as, uh, as the existing driveway into the site. Uh, just going to be the, the surface going to be improved and the utilities that need to be run underneath it uh, and then rebuilt um, just a little uh, with the grading a little more even uh, through, that, through that roadway. Um, we have uh, under, under uh, basement level parking here and, and the new addition on this side and for the entirety of uh, the new proposed building. Uh, they all have uh, basement, those two have basement level parking. Um, so as, as was described, uh, we're looking for a ratio of 1.3 uh, spaces per unit, and that's based on uh, historical data that's been gathered by, uh, by Chinberg Properties and uh, the many properties that they operate uh, that are similar to this, and that is the, that's the amount of spaces that they uh, use and have found to be adequate for, uh, for this type of development. Uh, so that's what we're that's what we're uh, going with on this. Um, as Paul discussed, uh, we are uh, we are showing this uh, river walk uh, along the along the existing the existing wall here. Um, this is um, it's not at this point intended to be open to the public on either side because we don't we just don't control any of that. But we wanted to have this available for uh, for the residents and for hopefully in the future for. Uh, you know, for, for public use walking through the through here and down uh, along the river. That leave this up here for reference. Um, but if there's any questions, I'm happy to happy to take them here. May have. May have some questions for you, but I'm going to open up to a public hearing. Oh, yep. Can you block that out for the time being? Sure. Open a public hearing. Anybody care to comment on this application? Director Mears, is there any correspondence on this, this application? None this evening, Mr. Chairman. Seeing none, close the public hearing. Turn to questions from the board. Mr. Haberman. Yeah, when I was reviewing the uh, drawings, I saw the uh, spaces for your snow, and uh, I was wondering, uh, just looking at it, I'm a little concerned of whether or not that's enough and how you determined whether or not it was going to be enough for stockpiling the snow. Um, generally, when we go through these, we, what we do is we try to get 5% of, of the plowed area uh, and have that designated so there are, so there's, that much square footage to be putting it in there uh, and then from there uh, it's assumed that there will be enough buildup available uh, to be able to handle uh, to be able to handle what's on site uh, it is you know it, it is more of a more of a rough you know rule of thumb uh, but there will be uh, there will be uh, significant amounts of snow storage down at the end of uh, the end of the lower parking area there I'm sure that's going to be quite a bit of uh, usage on that side and then that uh, similarly, up at the north end of the site, at that parking area there. So, as everything kind of moves through, we're planning on, you know, starting it there and building up from, uh, you know, from through throughout the season. Yeah. yeah so, <coughs> I guess the, that's what you generally use is a five percent. Or we'll, we'll do a five percent on these. Yep. On mo most most of your projects that you've done uh, prior to. Uh, usually, it's the the. The projects that we have that have the separated, um, you know, parking spaces and, and parking lots and, and different drives, those will go for five percent. And it's usually just because it's uh, they'll be able to wing most of it, wing a lot of it off to the side. Um, if it was like a big parking lot, like a like a Walmart, then we'd have to have we'd have to have additional 
uh, space set aside for it. So. Great. Thank you. Mr. Barry, then Mr. Witham. Thank you. Um, I'll tell you, I've, I have gone over these drawings many times. I, I love the design. You know, um, I mean, from, from the way that it's graded, it's a tough site. I mean, it's built into the side of a hill. Uh, you know, you're, you're packing a lot of stuff into a little area. It, it was well done. Um, have no problem with the drainage. Have no problem with the utilities. Um, I'm a big fan of the, of the architecture. I can tell you I've spoken with my wife several times on this. Um, she loves the adaptive reuse. Um, I like how you're implementing modern architecture and um, bringing out the old architecture as well. I think there's, there's a lot of really good things here. So it keeps our history, uh, you know, but it's also very functional. Uh, that's really great. Um, the only thing that I'm going to ask about, because I know we, uh, we gave a, a real hard time to the folks on Elm Street, right? 1.3 parking spaces. Uh, do you guys have any strategy as far as offsite? Uh, either some some form of contract with local uh, business owners or uh, private lots or anything of that sort. Uh, we we don't um, and we don't anticipate to need that uh, given we so Chimberg operates eighteen hundred apartments and uh, we have a database across that portfolio of of the properties and our parking utilization rate. So that one point three is we're building to what we think we need uh, based on the data set we have. Um, if by chance, and I should say, we have ultimately we have supreme control over it because we sign leases and we can dictate how many parking spaces you get via the lease. So um, we will solve to 1.3. Uh, and if for whatever reason we want to go beyond that, then it's our hunt to find those spaces privately. Understood. At least I want to ask the question because yep. we, boy, we hammered those guys on Elm Street really hard for 1.3. So yes, and if memory uh, memory serves, uh, they they came in lower than that and we got them to 1.3. Right, we raised them up. So, okay, at least um, to, just to be fair from one project to the next, I at least have to put that out there. So thank you for addressing that. Um, I mean, beyond that, is there, is there, um, is there any need for, for uh, transportation services like bus stops or anything? I don't know if there's, a, if there's anything as far as transportation or Close anything like that worked into your project. Yeah, the closest one is over on Franklin Street uh, for that pickup, and we have we've been in contact with Coast. Uh, we're still awaiting uh, we're still awaiting comment from um, from Rad Nichols, and I don't think uh, Mike Williams has ever ever reached out. Um, so that's something uh, we can continue to effort. But at, at this point, I think they've uh, if they were planning on doing any uh, any improvements or anything that would whether it would impact this project or that this project would re require them to do. I think they would have gotten back to us uh, at this point. That's the best, best answer I can give on that one. Fair enough. I toss it out there just food for thought, you know. Um, I mean, but just general comments. I love the project. I mean, this is a big win for the city. Um, you have my full support. I will be voting in favor of you tonight. Um, I'll tell you, it's uh, between this and, and Elm Street. I mean, we're, we're almost halfway to our, 20, our 2040 goal. So this, this is really great. So best of luck to you, and uh, let's see what the other counselors have to say. Mr. Witham, then Mr. Horton. Thank you. The on the uh, the last map that you showed, the the southeast corner is a lot that's the former steam plant. Uh, for some reason, I always thought that that used to be all part of this parcel. It is not. Is that a, a an expansive parking lot that's on that parcel? Uh, you, the parcel, the abutting parcel there. That's yes. that's the one that has that. Yeah, that two kind of that two tier parking area. Yeah. That's all on the. Got it. So that is not owned by Chinberg. That is owned uh, by Aquira. Oh wow! So I, I did not recognize yeah. that initially. So the only access to that is through the road, which will ultimately be named Textile Lane. So I'm guessing there's going to be some sort of easement necessary for them to access that. That easement's in place. Yeah, that one's. It already is. Existing easement that they've uh, that they put into place a long time ago, but when everybody uh, owned kind of everything out here they, and, they made sure they they had the access through and that area. retaining wall and guardrail is that owned by a clara as part of this law or is it owned by chinberg that is owned by a clara along the along the entry got it and has that been assessed from a durability perspective is that still in good condition i mean i, I, uh, I visually i've uh, i've been out there and, and observed it uh, there's hasn't i don't know if there's been any report on 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 the stability of it but it appears to be in in 
in great shape from, okay. from visual inspection. And, and the access road in, I, I've driven down it many times with a fire truck, but um, uh, how wide is it? It's the, the access road is 20, uh, it's 33 feet from the retaining wall uh, to the start of the slope out there. Okay. Um, and it's, that's one of, the, one of the areas where that the retaining wall and some of the portion just beyond the retaining wall is on that Eclara property. So two vehicles could pass each other with, with some comfort there oh, yeah. then. So yeah, that, that's, I guess, what I was looking at. Goes out onto River Street. Um, River Street does have a sidewalk on the side uh, of, of your entry. Yep. Uh, where this is now going to be more than just a driveway, it's going to be a lane. Uh, is there plans to add uh, tactile warning strips, improve those handicap tip downs for the sidewalk? Correct. Yep, we're gonna uh, planning on installing the tactile warning strips and uh, and doing the the markings for the for an actual crosswalk. Crosswalk there. there. Yep. And and how is uh, lighting at that entrance? Is there a street light there, or are there's, we proposing to put one? Or? There's a gooseneck just um, west, just so just uphill of it, uh, and it's on uh, it's on the utility pole that's that's nearest the street there. The other utility pole that's that's a little further a little further east. That one's kind of set back in the abutting property, so that one may not may not get the same uh, the same coverage. In, in your opinion, is there enough lighting out there to identify pedestrians and such at night? There is. At that okay. Because yeah. right. again, I just see a, a heightened amount of pedestrian traffic leaving your access, going out on the main street, and then perhaps accessing the downtown or post right. bus at Franklin Street or yep. those sorts of things. Okay, it's my only question for now. Thank you, Mr. Witham, Mr. Horton. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm going to agree with uh, a lot of the board members of uh, what they've already said, but uh, uh, great to see this project uh, getting going. Uh, you got my full support. Um, as I understand it, you know, it's, it's very expensive to redevelop these sites. So, I mean, I understand the economy of it and uh, happy to see it happening. Uh, if you could, though, uh, I'm, I understand the, uh, the granite curbing waivers. Uh, could you speak a little bit about the soil density uh, waiver? I think that's what it was called. And perhaps uh, just to uh, <clears throat> give us an overview of the waiver for uh, trees. Um, yes, the, and those are the, the, soil, uh, the soil study waiver uh, is just so we don't have to have um, a soil scientist go in there and tell us what type of soil is all around the site because it's almost all fill and... Yep. It would just be one big block of urban land is what you'd get for the study. So it wouldn't really, wouldn't really provide us any useful information. It's for uh, dust from a fire. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. So there's, there, there are, you know, um, their borings have been done uh, to, to look at the, you know, the foundations uh, and that type of thing. Uh, so as far as the stability of the site concern, uh, that's, that's all being taken care of with, uh, with the, the building design and that portion of it. Uh, the, the waivers we were looking for for, uh, the buffer signs and those type of things. Uh, that's one thing we kind of went through with, uh, with the Conservation Commission. Uh, and it's due to the fact that normally on a site that's not developed, uh, they want to see those signs for, uh, you know, the wooded area 100 feet out and 75 feet out from, from the river. Mm -hmm. In this case, they'd be basically putting them in the middle of an existing developed area. So it didn't make sense. So we asked for the waiver on that just to kind of just dot the I's on it. So. Understood. Is and then, uh, lastly, the uh, the sh the trees you'd request you requested a waiver for the trees. Oh, the every fifteen trees. feet, I think it was. Yes, um, yeah, and that was also uh, something that we we discussed with our. Uh, we do have a landscape architect uh, working on this project, and uh, in simple terms, he said it's too much of a shelved site to mm -hmm. make that even worth it. Mm -hmm. um, and then he he said it would be better to strategically place the trees, uh, the shade trees on this site, or it's. It doesn't quite do the same thing as if you just had something on a big flat plane out there and you had to find yourself some shade somewhere. Uh, this is this is more of a more of kind of a one you know, one off type of uh, landscape plan for this one, uh, where it where it's really specified what needs to be put where to make the site work. So it didn't really fit into the cookie cutter. So mm -hmm. instead of trying to get the landscape architect to make it work, we said, does it make sense? And he said. The waiver makes more sense on this project. So. Understood. Thank you. If I could speak to the trees just for a moment um, to build on uh, what Neil just said. Uh, because the site has so many different terraces, like there's a lot visually that's happening just with the topography. And it is very, the site's very densely planted, as you'll see on your landscape plan. 
Um, and uh, this is it's a great landscape architect, um, um, Doug Greiner. So he actually, fun side story, um, he actually, uh, the 2010 master plan for the city has a bunch of beautiful hand drawings, and that was Doug Greiner. So, um, so he's a long, long history of, of uh, thinking about uh, the riverfront and Summersworth, and um, and I think it's beautifully planted and will and will provide adequate shade and visual interest. Uh, it just doesn't meet to Neil's point the cookie cutter of a, a large Walmart parking lot where you, there's nothing to to give you shelter, so you, or no topography, nothing of interest. Um, no breaks in the, the parking lot, so you need a lot more trees to do to accomplish the same thing. Mr. Richardson. Yeah, thank you. Um, Mr. Barry already covered my question about the parking, and I was going to save my comments until we got to the waiver, but you covered that already. Um, on, I've, got, I've got a couple of questions. First of all, I, I want to say I, I really like the name. It goes to the history of the area. To call it textile lane, I think is the perfect thing to, to use as a name for for that. Snow plowing, and we already had the question asked about where is it going to go. But is textile lane going to be a city plowed lane, or are you going to take care of it? Because I'm assuming you're going to do your own parking lots and all of that. So where's the dividing line? The, uh, does the city do Canal Street? I don't think they do, right? No. Yeah. So I, I, we will be plowing it. Okay. All right. That that. That helps. That that's. Thank you for doing that. <laughs> uh, like I said, I assumed you were going to do your own parking lot, so that made more sense to me than the city driving in to do that. Um, the only other thing I, I, I ask, and you've obviously been on the site and walked over it, and we've used the words that it's in an historical area. Um, from your experience walking there, is there any kind of historical anything there that you might run into that could be call for some preservation or something of that nature. Do you anticipate any of that? I don't. Um, I mean, the first fire back in, I think, 2004 was, a, I think, a 10 alarm fire or something ridiculous like that, like a very large, very hot. So um, anything inside the buildings was essentially eviscerated and then uh, hazardous waste that got hauled off. Um, and there's been two consequential fires. So the 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 site was previously developed, and I don't know if it's in your packet here, it was in the Conservation Commission packet, but there's an aerial from I think the 1950s or 60s that shows the footprint of the bleachery when, it, when uh, Chimburg, how it looked when Chimburg bought it, essentially, and the site is probably 90% covered by buildings. So there's not a lot of uh, there other than foundations and rubble. It's just, it's literally concrete pads and brick piles. Uh, that have been over, overgrown with invasive species <laughs> at this point. Just uh, any, any, uh, I don't know how many bricks are out there, but is there any opportunity to run into bricks of salvaging the bricks? Not unless you want to pay gonna... for them. <laughs> it's very, very well, expensive to salvage brick and they're very poor condition. Well, yeah, 19th century bricks can get a pretty good price from people who want to use them these days. And I'm just throwing it out there, but that's your decision, so. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, that is um, not in the budget at this time. Yeah. Well, I'm saying you get money for 19th century bricks sure, these days. Yeah, we'll, we'll salvaging them is another we'll thing. Yeah. I get it. Yep. Thank you. Mr. Martin. Hi. Uh, so uh, first of all, I just want to second uh, this board's uh, kudos on how well this uh, proposed project rhymes aesthetically with our city's industrial heritage, um, textile lane in particular. Um, I'm particularly excited about uh, this project's potential to revitalize Main Street in particular. Uh, which is obviously in, in special need of it. Uh, this, I apologize if this question uh, may seem rather basic, but it's primarily for my own education as a new board member. I think you mentioned um, a 10% uh, low income segment to this development. Is that uh, a statutory minimum of any kind? So it, I think low income might not be the term I'd use. I'd probably call it workforce housing. Um, okay. It's 80% um, area median income, which is a type of affordable housing or a degree of affordable housing, but I would say it's a very normal income. Um, so, but not super um, affordable, but not the deepest type of affordable. Um, uh, and that would be a requirement if we accept a grant that we have been awarded 
through uh, Invest in H. So the, the de uh, Department of Economic Development uh, at the city of New Hampshire received some federal grant money. They allotted it to um, housing and one tranche of the housing money was grants to enable demolition to make way for housing. So we applied for some of that grant money in hopes of being able to remove some of the rubble and foundations on the site to enable this project to happen. And we were awarded $150,000. One of the stipulations of that because of the timing of the, where the grant was awarded is that we would have to make 10% of the units affordable to 80% MI, which is more of a workforce housing category. Um, and we are likely to accept that grant. Um, we are currently working, that stipulation was not made aware uh, to us, nor was the award until quite recently. So we're still um, working through the financials of that. So we're anticipating to have an answer in the next couple of days on whether or not uh, we'll be accepting the grant and that 10% uh, will be there. But uh, it will be, if we do accept the grant, the state will require, will, will require that. So yes. Okay. Thank you, excellent clarification. Mr. Belmore. Yeah, just a quick point. Um, certainly going to be voting for the project, but I think the courtesy review went a long way to present the bones of the project and help understanding the project and what was going to eventually be the design. So I, I really don't have any questions. So, um, as far as the grants, we did partner with Chinberg and we also partnered with the Elm Street project. So actually the city applied for the grant with their input and we partnered with them and it'll go through the city. Uh, to them if they continue to accept it, as well as the Elm Street. They also got demolition uh, money, even though they've already demolitioned their building. So in any event, it was money available. We're encouraged to apply, and it helps out projects like uh, Elm Street and this, this particular project. So thank you. Any further questions from the board? Mr. Witham. More of a comment I was looking at the lighting plan uh, I think this is uh, obviously once the site is lit that's going to be a change for uh, folks that live along the river right it's going to be a brighter spot than it has been for uh, quite some time um, I appreciate all the lighting is going to be downlit and shielded I looked at your, your cut sheet for the lighting uh, I will say you picked a pretty boring light but it's probably a price point light so uh, I get it uh, wouldn't be my first choice, but uh, not my project, right? So if, uh, if this were in the historic district, I would encourage the HDC to have fun with that because I would say that that's not good. But um, the access road in, again, I'm, I'm focused on that because I, it is going to be used by pedestrians. That, so that'll be lit as well as the parking lot. Right. Got it. No further questions, thanks. Any other questions from the board? Hey, entertain a motion for a regional impact. Make a motion that has no regional impact. Motion made by Mr. Belmore. Second. Second by Mr. Horton. Discussion? Those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Next, the waiver request. Entertain a motion for waiver request number one. Mr. Horton. <laughs> I move that the request of 200 Main Street, LLC, for a waiver from Section 91B6 of the Site Plan Review Regulations requirement to provide high-intensity soil mapping be approved. Second. Mr. Mr. Horton, second by Mr. Belmore. Discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Waiver is granted. I obtain a motion for waiver number two. Motion to move that the request of 200 Main Street LLC for a waiver regarding site plan uh, review regulations requirement to install wet, wetland buffer signage be approved. Motion made by Mr. Belmore, seconded by Mr. Horton. Discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Your waiver turn. is granted. Your turn, Chris. I move that the request of 200 Main Street for a waiver from Section 124A3 of the site plan review regulations requirement to provide 1.5 parking spaces uh, per residential dwelling unit and allow 1.3 parking spaces per residential dwelling unit be approved. Second. Motion made by Mr. Horton, seconded by Mr. Belmore. Discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Waiver is granted. Waiver number four. 
Over the request of 200 Main Street LLC for a waiver uh, in our site plan regulations to allow for areas to be without uh, curbing be approved. Motion made by Mr. Belmore. Second. Second by Mr. Horton. Discussion. Mr. Witham. If I read this correctly, it's not to be without curbing, but is to use bituminous curbing instead. Um. Uh, no, it's it's not going to be bituminous curbing. Wherever there's uh, curbing for sidewalks, it's going to be a granite curb. Uh, but this is for the entryway coming in to allow sheet flow. Right. Yep. Fair enough. Any further discussion? Uh, just if I may, Mr. Chairman, the only reason I ask is that I'm not sure we've ever approved a waiver to go to what I'll call hot top curbing versus granite curbing. So I would not support that, but that doesn't appear what we're waiving here. Just for the discussion on that, I believe we, we are going to be striping the, the walkway on this section of roadway, right? Uh, correct. correct. It's going to yep. be the, the just, lanes will be striped. On just that. for clarification. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Obtain a motion. Waiver number five. Waiver number five. I move that the request of 200 Main Street for a waiver from 124B7 of the site plan review regulations to provide one deciduous shade tree every 15 parking spaces be approved. Motion made by Mr. Horton. Second. Second by Mr. Belmore. Discussion? Those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Waiver is granted. Waiver number six. Is there a motion? I move that the request of 200 Main Street for a waiver from 124B8 of the site plan review regulations requirement to provide shade trees around the perimeter of all uh, parking areas at a minimum ratio of one tree per 20 feet of parking lot perimeter be approved. Motion made by Mr. Horton. Second. Second by Mr. Belmore. Discussion. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Waiver is granted. Contain a motion for waiver number seven. I move that the request of 200 Main Street for a waiver from 125C of the site plan review regulations requirement to construct sidewalks be approved. Motion made by Mr. Horton. Second. Seconded by Mr. Belmore. Discussion. Mr. Witham. <laughs> Yeah, a little confused on this one as well. These are sidewalks on their site, not on city roads that we're suggesting, because there already is a sidewalk on the city road as we discussed, and you're going to make some improvements to that. Correct. Yeah, <coughs> it's not. But the uh, <coughs> you know we're not creating any new any new sidewalks to accommodate it on the city on the city the city streets. City right of ways. This is not providing any clarity to me. Can someone help? <laughs> It's, uh, we're not improving that that the existing entrance Correct. will not be a, a physical raised sidewalk connecting to that existing sidewalk. Is that required? Is that what we're waiving here? Yeah, it's like the off-site improvement uh, sidewalk requirement, typical. But there already is a sidewalk, so why do they have to have a waiver from the requirement to put in a sidewalk if there already is one? I think it was because... Uh, not to improve that sidewalk like rehabilitate it rehabilitate it oh god our our our, uh, our improvements on that sidewalk are just going to be just installing the detectable warning and painting the the intersection there with the crosswalk so the sidewalk itself uh to and from on river street is going to stay in the condition it is whether or not that's uh, Fair okay, enough. And, uh, you know, other projects, I mean, we, we've wrestled with this a lot. Um, if there isn't a sidewalk, with it, that's where we wrestle a lot. I, I don't know as though we've ever dealt with an assessment of the current sidewalk condition that we need to improve. If we have, that would be a discussion of uh, some sort of uh, donation or exaction. The same would be true of River Street if we thought that that was necessary. Uh, I'm just not seeing the need for this waiver. So I'm going to vote no. Any further discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Waiver is granted. Intend a motion for waiver number eight. 
I move that the request of 200 Main Street for a waiver from Section 126D9 of the Site Plan Review Regulations requirement to provide a Class B buffer yard be approved. Motion made by Mr. Horton. Second. Second by Mr. Belmore. Discussion. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Waiver is granted. You're up, Bob. I move that the request of 200 Main Street LLC, LLC for a waiver from our site plan review regulations requirement to provide on-site groundwater recharge be approved. Motion made by Mr. Belmore. Second by Mr. Horton. Yeah. Discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Waiver is granted. Did we skip number nine? Yeah. yeah. I move that the request of 200 Main Street for a waiver from Section 128B of the Site Plan Review Regulations, the requirement that illumination levels at property boundaries to exceed 0.1 foot candles for receiving residential properties be approved. Motion made by Mr. Horton, second by Mr. Belmore. Discussion. Mr. Witham. Can I ask the applicant why you're seeking this waiver? Uh, this is due to the fact that we want to keep the, the entryway lit and the only space we have is close enough to the that abutting property line where we can't get any fixtures to cut off to the point where it's 0 .01 at the property line. It's always just above. Uh, I did. Fair, I did fair, yeah. is, is the fixture going to be modified in any way to try to help with that? It's going to be back shielded. Okay. Um, at, when they ran the, ran the photometrics program, it still showed that point oh, you know, Enough over wash 0 .01. There. Yeah. It's, it should be known, I did, uh, with this waiver request, I did uh, submit a sketch um, that indicated kind of how the grade <coughs> of that abutting property goes up. So the, the house on the abutting property is actually about uh, 15 and a half feet above where the roadway is going to be. Uh, so we don't expect very much spillover to get anywhere onto that property, uh, but it doesn't, the, the program can't, can't sure. take it into account. Would, so would you be okay with a condition attached to this waiver that the lighting along the access drive have uh, back shielding installed? Back shield lighting. I think that's fine. Yeah. I'll make an amendment to the motion to include back shielding, uh, shielding on the fixtures that are align the uh, entry drive. I'm good with that. Se second also. Yeah. Motion by Mr. Horton, seconded by Mr. Belmore. Any further discussion? Those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Waiver is granted. Next conditional use permit. Does anybody have a motion? Motion to approve the conditional use permit with the uh, Conservation Commission's recommendation to replace Japanese lilac with non invasive plant species. Motion made by Mr. Belmore. Second. Second by Mr. Horton. Discussion. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Conditional use permit is granted. Next site plan. At this time, I'd ask Director Mears to review the conditions of approval. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. First is plan revisions. Please list all the waivers granted on the plan. Uh, the applicant shall address any outstanding comments from Horsley Witten and Vanessa and Associates third party review to the satisfaction of the Director of Planning and Community Development. Please provide a visual representation of the delineating features for pedestrian safety on textile lane. Um, please provide detailed engineered plans for the sidewalk at the intersection of te textile lane and River Street that meets current ADA requirements within public rights of way. Please provide detail of walkway adjacent to the Salmon Falls River. Utility elements are required to be screened at street level or on the roof. Please know invasive species shall be handled and disposed of properly. Provide a maintenance removal activities and management plan for the invasive species located on the property. Please identify any public art that is part of this project. Require that the applicant engineer show the retaining wall ownership along the Salmon Falls River. Please include the following notes from the water utilities. The fire service will be required to have a backflow device. Buildings will be required to have a pressure reducing valve. Conditions that must be met prior to the final approval. The final plan shall bear the stamp and signature of an engineer, licensed land surveyor, and a landscape architect. Federal and state 
Permits are required and shall be in place before plan signing, including New Hampshire DES alteration of terrain. Please provide any provo proposed easement language uh, for access to public uh, infrastructure or new easements needed for drainage. For legal review and approval, an escrow shall be collected in the amount of $750 and $50 or determined by the Director of Planning and Community Development to cover the cost of review and recording of the easement at the Stratford County Registry of Deeds prior to the issuance of CO. Conditions to be met prior to the start of site work. Construction cost estimate for this project shall be submitted to the department. A performance surety in the amount agreeable to the Department of Development Services, but no less than 25% of the cost of site construction determined by the engineer's estimate of construction value will be established for on-site erosion control and site restoration prior to any site work and off-site improvements. Um, if all site work is completed a, as proposed, this account will be refunded. An escrow account in the amount set by the city's contract engineer and agreeable to the Department of Development Services will be established for site construction, construction inspections prior to the start of any site work. Landscaping survival surety in the amount of 10% of the total cost of landscaping. Applicant shall provide a pest mitigation plan prior to the issuance of building permit. Please provide the city with documentation of the condition of the retaining walls and their adequacy to support the proposed use. The applicant shall apply for new water and sewer connection permit. The applicant will be required to pay standard water and sewer connection fees assessed on new properties connecting to water and sewer systems. Water fees will be based on the size and water meter needed and sewer connection fees will be based on the estimate of water used and equivalent number of bedrooms. Prior to the pre-construction meeting, the applicant shall provide the contact information of the certified inspector who will be completing the SWIP inspections for the construction general permit. These reports shall be submitted to the Department of De Development Services. A pre-construction pre meeting is required. Erosion controls shall be properly installed. Erosion controls uh, shall be maintained throughout construction. Any breaks or breaches shall be repaired within 48 hours of all storm events. All applicants requiring a stormwater management and erosion control plan shall submit relevant pollutant accounting information to the Director of Planning and Community Development as required by the Public Works Director. Relevant pollutant tracking information sh shall be submitted prior to holding the pre-construction meeting. Post-construction pollutant information must be entered at the time of as-builts uh, that are submitted. The applicant shall uh, obtain all applicable permits through the Department of Public Works. This shall include, but not be limited to, driveway permit, utility pole license, and trench permits. Conditions applicable during and after construction. Building plants shall bear the stamp of a certified fire protection engineer licensed in New Hampshire to certify compliance with all egress, emergency lighting, smoke, heat, and CO detection, fire alarm, monitoring, and reporting systems, fire suppression systems, or any other fire protection related. Third party review permit uh, and third party building inspections paid for the developer is required. This structure will be required to have a new address assignment. Please submit a request for a new address to the city engineer if a hearing before the E911 committee is required. Uh, this he hearing must occur prior to the issuance of building permits. Per section 1923 E9, the building shall display the designated address number in such a manner as to be plainly visible from the street which abuts the main entrance to the property. Such number shall be a minimum of 3.5 inches in height and must be reflective. There shall be no wetlands uh, degradation during construction. Please note that the retaining walls over four feet in height require a building permit. Any retaining walls over six feet in height per 2018 International Building Code needs geotechnical documentation. A copy of the completed stormwater inspection and maintenance log shall be provided to the Department of De Development Services annually on or before July 1st. This is an ongoing condition of approval. All landscaping shall be maintained and any dead or dying vegetation shall be replaced in a timely manner. Rooftop mechanical equipment is required to be screened. All outdoor lighting, including security lights, shall be downlit and shielded so no direct visible light from adjacent properties and roadways. And as-built plans are required as part of this project. Thank you, Director Mayors. Continue site plan motion. Mr. Horton. Yeah, I move that the request of 200 Main Street LLC for site plan for 
for 148 residential building and associated parking infrastructure located at 200 Main Street, site number 06 Tech 2024, and CUP number 02 Tech 2024, be approved with the conditions highlighted in the director's memo. Motion made by Mr. Horton, seconded by Mr. Belmore. Any discussion? Mr. Witham. Yeah, one of the conditions that the uh, city planner highlighted was the permitting for a utility pole. Do you think that you're going to need an additional utility pole to access the site? It was not anticipated that we would. It's good news because that's right in the middle of your driveway. I'm pretty convinced. <laughs> <of that. laughs> Any further discussion? Those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Site plan is approved. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Um, possible for the next presentation. Did I get any mail today? Hmm? Did I get any mail today? Yeah, you did. Next on to new business, item 4C. Bowler Engineering is seeking site plan approval for two self-service automated telemachines, ATMs, with associated infrastructure on property located at 409 High Street in the Residential Commercial RC District Assistance Map 36, Lot 05, Site Number 21. 2024. Director Mears, anything to add? Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. The applicant proposes to construct two self-service ATMs. The ATMs will be available to the public 24-7. The site is proposed to be accessed from the private right-of-way of Penny Lane and exit the site through the existing service credit union, uh, 15 Penny Lane. Site is designed to accommodate eight queuing vehicles beyond the two vehicles at the eight. ATM. The applicant has been before the SRTC for two reviews back in July and back in September. Drainage report uh, has been reviewed and the applicant has uh, completed uh, revisions to the satisfaction of Horsley Witten, which was included uh, tonight. Uh, property is located in the residential commercial district is 1.25 acres with 273 feet of frontage along High Street. And this application is ready uh, for review and is complete. Make a motion we accept the application as complete. Motion made by Mr. Uh, Horton. Second by Mr. Berry. All those in favor? Raise your right hand. Opposed? This time I'd like to invite Bowler Engineering to make their presentation. Thank you, Thank you Michelle. Uh, Keith Cameron from Bowler, good evening Chair and Board Members. Also here is Dave Babagallo from Celadus and also Lisa Peterson and Jody Beach from Service Credit Union. They're back there. Um, you put the microphone Yes, closer. I'm going to present if there's any questions that can be directed to them later. They are in attendance. So I just wanted to run through a few of the, the plans, um, uh, the major plans. This is also yes. Also um, is that working now? Yep. Okay, great, thank you. Um, so basically, as mentioned, uh, the idea is two ATM, drive-up ATMs, with an entrance here off of Penny Lane. The exit actually off the adjacent um, parcel, which is owned by Service Credit Union. That's where the, the branch is. Um, so you can see, again, drive comes in, splits off two. We have plenty of queuing. Uh, and then obviously there's a stop, stop condition here. Again, just, this is one way. One thing to note here is when we laid this out, we were trying to limit the amount of impact to the site. So there's an existing utility corridor here, so we're making sure that we kept uh, the infrastructure out of that. But also there's a tree line back here where you're barely touching that. So literally the development's going where there's like open space now. We're limiting the uh, clearing of trees. Um, the next plan just shows the grading drainage and utilities. Just to note, the only utility, there's no water, there's no sewer, there's no gas, and so forth, is just your electrical. 
which is going to be fed off, uh, some electrical will be fed off the uh, existing sign that's out there now, and also some from the existing uh, branch. Main thing to note here, again, is uh, stormwater treatment. So right now, there's actually a little um, catch basin or yard drain here. Most of the site actually gets collected there and heads down, obviously, towards the further down to in front of the existing branch. We're mimicking the existing conditions, right? So that's the idea. So we're meeting the state and local requirements for stormwater so with pre and post and also with quality. The way we're doing that is actually as much pavement as we can get sheets into the a four bay, which is right here. And that provides the pretreatment, a sediment four bay. And then this part is actually the infiltration basin. So therefore, with the added impervious area, right, by providing an infiltration basin, the idea is to infiltrate actually more than infiltrates there now. So that handles all of our treatment, uh, treatment needs. The outlet actually ties into that existing, that existing actually drain that's there. Also shown in this plan, just kind of you can see this is the existing, there's a bunch of existing utilities through here. Where by setting this back, we're not impacting any of those. Next plan is the landscape plan. Uh, I didn't really want to go into detail this. You can see there's some plantings around the actual ATMs. There's also some plantings here. Important to note, again, as I mentioned on the siting of this, we wanted to limit our impact to this existing buffer here, the existing trees. So again, this provides great uh, buffer from the adjacent property. So concern, obviously, during the technical review committee was one about headlights, right, pointing through here. The idea is we're not cutting any of these trees. You can see the existing tree line right here. I think it's like 75 feet wide, so there's not a concern. So again, we're just dressing up, make this aesthetically pleasing around the drive and around the ATM itself. That's the idea of the uh, landscape plan. The last plan I think I have here to show you is just the lighting plan. I believe I pulled, pulled that out here. So this just shows the locations of the lights. There's some canopy lights, a couple lights here, here, and here. One thing to note, you actually see one of the four waivers is for the lighting. To note, we are not hitting the requirements of the 0.2 foot candles at this property line, but you'll see in the waiver, again, that is owned by Service Credit Union. Same, and to light this area, we need to put this light here, so therefore not gonna be able to meet that requirement. But the idea is obviously safety and make sure we're lighting the area enough. So that, again, that's the reason for that waiver. Um, we're obviously meeting everything else, but this shows all the foot candles and obviously the proposed lights. That's all. That's all I had. All right. Thank you. Open to public hearing. Does anybody care to comment on this application? Director Mayors, is there any correspondence concerning this application? None this evening, Mr. Chairman. Seeing none, close the public hearing. Turn the questions to the board. Mr. Witham. Probably enough, quite a few here. Um, so the proposed access, Penny Lane is a private way. That's not maintained by the city. It's private, correct. Private way. Yeah. Um, a condition of approval that I would uh, like to see here is that uh, the appropriate uh, sign be affixed to each end of Penny Lane, noting it as a private way. Uh, that's something that we have liked to see done. I'm not sure how that got missed earlier. So. Um, it's a pennant sign on top of the existing street sign notifying it as a private way. So if you enter from High Street, the idea is, is that as you head down Petty Lane, I guess westerly, you would then enter the drive to access these two ATM units. Correct. Okay. And then they would exit out what's currently the exit for the drive-throughs of the existing that's bank building. That's so that's, that'll be a shared exit way. Exactly. You don't see any need for any conflict that'll occur there? No. Okay. No, we did not see that. Got it. And I, I know the existing bank does have, at the outermost uh, of that drive-through, there is an ATM there. Is the proposal to eliminate that ATM and make it a, a drive-through bay for actual customer service or I don't, I don't want to misspeak but my understanding is to stay the ATM is that is that correct staying. it's staying so there's a lot of ATM demand in the area correct okay, got it. and the new ATMs that when they get put in will they be uh, just like a freestanding ATM or are they in some sort of a, a hut or what, sure. what is that I can, look like? I can show you I did bring that plan oh please
Now, this is not my specialty, so I don't want to misspeak, but you can see here, this is showing the ATM, and there's a canopy over them with obviously some branding. So this is similar for both, for both of them. And they're in a... Is, it to like, is that not, constructed of wood? Is that a metal? What, what, what is that? Metal. metal. Just a question for the planner. Do they need a waiver for that structure? We did not have them get a waiver for that structure. I guess that's all I have for now. Mr. Horton. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Appreciate you talking to the uh, the waiver for your site lighting. Uh, I think you requested a total of four waivers, so if you could just take us through uh, the others uh, that speak to, let's see, let me, stormwater regulations and you get the site lighting. So if you want to just take me through those? Sure, I'll do them in order. Sure. Site lighting, I think, was the fourth one. Yeah. Um, so the first three, the first one is the idea about um, to, uh, to call out the trees that are greater than 12 inch in caliper. So as I mentioned, there are no 12 uh, inch caliper trees that we're touching. So we didn't see the need for that. The very limited amount that we're impacting is backhand, it's just a fringe of the tr tree line. There's no 12 inch caliper trees there. So that's the first one. The second one is um, the peak flow. So. And this was reviewed by Horsley Witten. Because of the way the site is laid out right now, again, it's, there's no in existing impervious, right? So we're adding impervious. At the entrances, you just show you here and here, there's no way of collecting that impervious runoff and get it into the basin. Mm -hmm. For the infiltration basin, you're required to have a separation distance between the bottom and the estimated season high on water. And we did testing in this location. We know what that is. So therefore, you can't get there by grade. So if you were to put a basin here in here, you physically cannot gravity then have enough pipe over the a cover over the pipe. Yeah. And then the um, third waiver is similar to the previous application the high intensity uh, soil mapping, mm -hmm. uh, very small site, really not necessary for this, but just to follow the nature of the regulation, we did two test pits out there. They match what the soil survey says. And again, the important thing is that we have a test pit in that infiltration area, proving the infiltration rates and the estimated season high groundwater table. Thank you. And uh, your application actually um, reminds me, I think, of uh, a couple years back, I think somebody, there was a high demand for ATMs. I think they took off with one, too, wasn't there? Wasn't there? Did that happen? <laughs> That's all I got, though. Thanks. <laughs> Mr. Witham. If you could, could you go to the landscaping plan? Um, sure, no problem. So I, I appreciated the comment from SRTC about headlights and the neighbors, and I do appreciate your comment about the existing wood line uh, being a, a reasonable screen. But I, I do see on the landscaping plan there is a, a row of what I'm going to guess are maybe an arborvitae or something on that first turn. So uh, is, is that what those are? Let me look closer. Hold on. Yeah, I can't look close enough because the, 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 the print is like 0.25 font. So we have here is uh, JHBs, which are junipers. Okay, so that's a, a, a something that's green. It'll last through the winter, so that's going to yes. be an effective uh, shade of headlights. It's going to be an added buffer for that. So I appreciate that. So, so I thank you. I, I think that's a great landscape. So we supplemented the, the existing buffer. Perfect. Also, yep. Um, quite frankly, surprised there weren't a butters here to talk about that because the headlights are often a concern. So. Uh, but I appreciate the effort being put forth to, to add to that. So uh, I'm in support of this. Thank you. Mr. Berry. Yeah, just uh, speaking about that uh, second waiver for the post development, um, just the numbers that I'm seeing are almost insignificant. The two year 0 0.02 increase, that's nothing. Um, but just to put things into perspective, guys, I mean, 0.56, remember, that's for a 100 year storm. They are super rare. and. Um, I'm okay with approving the waiver just because one of the location of the site, it's, it's low, it's near wetlands. Um, and let's be frank, the, uh, the water that you're going to see in a 100-year storm, um, you're going you're gonna to want to look other places um, considering where it is. So I, I don't think there's going to be any negative impact from this waiver. All right, thank you.
Any further questions from the board? It's time to entertain a regional impact motion. I move Mr. that Richardson. there's no regional impact. Second. second. Motion made by Mr. Richardson, seconded by Mr. Witham. Any discussion? Those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Next waiver request. Entertain a motion for waiver number one. Yeah, I move that there at the application of Bowler Engineering for site plan approval for two. Oh. Uh, Mr. Mr. Horton, seconded by Mr. Uh, Belmore. Discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Waiver is granted. You're up, Bob. Move that the request of Service Credit Union for a waiver from our site plan regulations requirement for post-development peak flow rates to be reduced, be approved. Motion made by Mr. Belmore. Second. Second by Mr. Horton. Discussion? Those in favor, raise your right hand. Those opposed? Waiver is granted. Contain motion, waiver number three. Waiver number three. I move that the request of Service Credit Union for a waiver from Section 121780 two of the site plan regulations requirements for post development peak flow rates be reduced uh, to be reduced be approved motion made by mr horton seconded by mr belmore discussion those in favor raise your right hand opposed waiver is granted obtain a motion for waiver number four I move that the request the service credit union for a waiver from the appropriate um, section of our site plan regulations to allow illumination levels in excess of 0.2 foot candles at the receiving commercial property of map 36 lot 3 be approved. Motion made by Mr. Belmore. Second. Second by Mr. Witham. Discussion. All those in favor raise your right hand. Opposed? The waiver is granted. At this time, I invite Director Mears to uh, review conditions. Yes, uh, plan revisions, please list any waivers granted on the plan. Please note the stormwater operation and maintenance plan that the applicant will be required to submit yearly inspection reports of the stormwater management system by July 1st of each year. This will be a condition of the site plan. Please list uh, all waivers and conditions, sorry, that was Duplicate. Applicant shall apply shall address any address any outstanding comments from Horsley Wynn third party review to the satisfaction of the Director of Planning and Community Development. Uh, private way signage shall be installed uh, at the intersections of uh, Penny Lane. That was added tonight. Conditions that must be met prior uh, to final approval. The final plan shall bear the stamp and signature of an engineer, licensed land surveyor, and landscape architect. Federal and state permits shall be in place before signing and recording. Applicants shall provide easements to allow for shared use between properties located at map 36, lot 5, and lot 3. Draft easements shall be submitted for legal review prior to final approval. Easements shall be recorded at the Stratford County Register of Deeds prior to the issuance of certificate of occupancy for project completion prior to the start uh, review of an escrow shall be established for review in the amount determined by the Director of Planning and Community Development. Uh, conditions to be completed prior to the start of site work. Uh, construction cost estimates for the project shall be submitted. A pre-construction meeting is required at least one week prior to the start of construction. An escrow account in the amount set by the city's contract engineer and agreeable to the Department of Development Services will be establish, established for site construction inspections prior to the start of any site work. A preferment surety in the amount agreeable to the development Department of Development Services, but no less than 25% of the cost of site construction determined by the engineer's estimate of construction value will be established for on-site erosion control and site restoration prior to the start of any site walk. Uh, erosion control shall be properly installed. 
Landscaping survival uh, security, 10% of the total cost of landscaping or a minimum of $500, which, whichever is greater. All applicants require a stormwater management and erosion control plan, shall submit relevant pollutant accounting information to the Director of Planning and Community Development as required by the Public Works Director. Relevant pollutant tracking information shall be submitted prior to holding the pre-construction meeting. Post-construction pollutant information must be entered at time of as builts are submitted. The applicant shall obtain all applicable permits through the Department of Public Works that should be included but not limited to driveway permit, utility pole license, and trench permits. Conditions applicable during and after site work. Building plans shall bear the stamp of a certified protection engineer licensed in New Hampshire to certify compliance with all egress, emergency, smoke, heat, CO detection, fire alarm monitoring report systems, and any other fire protection related safety systems required by national or New Hampshire code. This structure will require a new addressing assignment. Please submit a request for a new address to the city engineer if a hearing before the E911 committee is required. This hearing must be completed prior to the issuance of building permits. Per section 1923E9, the building shall display the designated address in such a manner to be visible from the street. A copy of the completed stormwater inspection maintenance log shall be provided to the Department of Development Ser Services annually on or before July 1st. All landscaping shall be maintained and any dead or dying vegetation shall be, re be replaced in a timely manner. All Outdoor lighting shall be downlit and shielded, and as-built plans are required. Thank you, Director Mears. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Witham. Two points under the conditions applicable during and after construction. It, that would probably be the area to add that the Penny Lane signs on uh, both ends of Penny Lane be affixed with the uh, private way uh, marker uh, and I'd also like to strike condition a 4A it's, it's not a building we're not going to have a smoke alarm in it or sprinkler I don't think so this seems to not make sense here do you need a motion for that can that just be annotated or you need a motion? I think we should have a motion probably. I'd move that uh, item 4A be struck in that a new condition under conditions applicable and during and after construction regarding the private way penance be added. Second. Motion made by Mr. Witham, seconded by Mr. Barry. Discussion? All those in favor of the motion, raise your right hand. Opposed? Motion passes. We have a site plan motion. Mr. Witham. Sure. I move that the request of Bowler Engineering for a site plan approval for two self-service automated teller machines with association, associated infrastructure for a property located at 409 High Street, Map 36, Lot 5, Site 21-2024 be approved with the conditions as outlined by the planner. Motion made by Mr. Witham, seconded by Mr. Barry. Discussion? All those in favor raise your right hand. Opposed? Site plan is approved. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, no. Uh, next one, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Item 4D. Hanson Corner Realty LLC is seeking a site plan amendment to make revisions to parking and other site infrastructure on property located at 375 Route 108 in the Commercial Industrial CI District Assessors Map 58, Lot 05, Site Number 08-2021. Director Mears. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I could, uh, I'm going to recuse myself due to a perceived conflict of interest here. Thank you, Mr. Willem. Director Mears. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, this application received approval back in March 2021, site plan approval for automobile sales of new and used tractors, motor vehicles, recreational vehicles, snowblowers, and lawnmowers. Uh, that was approved back in March. The applicant is seeking approval for a number of alterations from the original site plan approval. 
Uh, the first is to remove the requirement to install a grass island along West High Street frontage. Uh, second, remove uh, green space shown in the front of the building and replace with four to five parking spaces. Uh, third, relocate the equipment security holding area from Route 108 frontage to the West High Street frontage. The 18 parking spaces are not proposed to be relocated. It is proposed that to have inventory display along Route 108 where the equipment security holding area was previously proposed. Applicant is seeking a waiver to allow 23 parking spaces where 40 are required. Uh, four, add three, eight by 24 shipping containers for storage. Uh, five, relocation of the dumpster for improved access for pickup and closure is proposed to allow for space for wood pallets and to be stored in the screened area. Uh, seven, removal of six parking spaces in the rear of the building. Eight, add a new inventory display area along West High Street. Nine, locate six parking spaces by the garage doors on West High Street side of the property. And 10, uh, is the shown location of the shipping containers. Uh, this property is located in the commercial industrial district. There is no proposed change in use from the existing use that is allowed. The property is located within the riparian and wetland buffer district. Uh, there is a uh, no build vegetated buffer area from zero to 50 feet of all of the following uh, are prohibited and limitations shall, shall apply. No chemicals, including pesticides of any kind or fertilizers of any kind, except those specified in RSA 483-B9-2D, uh, as amended from time to time, shall be applied. Rocks and stumps in their root system shall be left intact in the ground, and no natural ground cover or trees shall be removed, except as necessary for a footpath uh, to provide to water. Uh, this application is complete. I'm ready for review. Thank you, Director Mears. Entertain a uh, motion to accept the application. Motion. motion made by Mr. Orton. Second. Second by Mr. Belmore. Any discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Application is accepted. At this time, I'd like to invite. Hanson Corner Realty LLC to make their presentation. Thank you. Uh, my name is Raleigh Janados. I am the manager of Hanson Corner Realty LLC. I have been uh, managing that property for about 20 years. Uh, just to quickly go over each of the uh, items, uh, do you folks all have a marked up drawing in front of you? Uh, first item is A, uh, that's the green space on the West High Street side of the property. Um, let me just mention that uh, the reason I'm here is I'm trying to get the parking lot resurfaced and a number of two things out of the nine items identified on this uh, were what I originally came here to, to uh, request a waiver on. And they were recommendations made by the contractor uh, for this repavement project. Uh, the first one was um, item A, which is the green space island on the West High Street side of the parking lot. Uh, there was concern that there would be, bless you, um, a water runoff interference with that island, uh, and there would be some additional cost, obviously for me to um, put that island in as opposed to uh, just resurfacing the parking lot as is in the current um, square footage of the parking lot. Uh, the second item, uh, item B, which is the front of the showroom of the facility, uh, the intent there is to uh, get potential customers closer to the entrance of the building. Uh, we do have two handicapped spots that were originally approved uh, th three years ago, uh, and I'd like to put four additional spots in the front of that, in front of the building. Uh, there will still be a five foot by the width of the showroom um, green space uh, that would, we will be, right currently there was some three or four foot high rose bushes 
uh, we'll be reinstalling uh, some type of um, green material, flowering material uh, in that location uh, inbound of the, rec the uh, required ADA um, sidewalk that was part of the site plan. Item C, uh, the security uh, holding area that was originally approved uh, on the site plan <coughs> located on the Route 108 side of the property. Uh, we would like to move to the West High Street <coughs> the corner of the property. Uh, the intent is, uh, you know, displaying a higher, there's a higher uh, car count on the, on the 108 side and we were trying to get more product uh, on that 108 side of the property. Uh, I'm speaking like it's me. I'm speaking for Patriot Tractor who's the um, tenant in the building running that business. Okay, item C1 uh, indicates uh, an area that will now be a display area which is on the 108 side of the property. Uh, item D locates the three uh, storage trailers uh, in the rear of the, built the property. Uh, those uh, storage trailers were brought in uh, due to the concern for some additional security uh, for items that were smaller, valuable, that could walk away if they're not uh, housed. Um, you know, the, the concern of the holding pen that we're re relocating on West High Street uh, could, uh, those items really wouldn't be securely uh, located uh, in that holding pen. So they've got a locked storage trailer. Uh, item E, uh, the dumpster currently, per the plan, is in the, the uh, southeast corner of the building. Uh, we wanted to get that moved away from the corner of the building and moved over uh, where the balloon E is on the back uh, portion of the parking lot. Uh, that prop that uh, uh, dumpster area is currently 15 by 15. We wanted to increase that to 15 by 20 approximately so that we could, uh, if there was some pallets, whether they're wooden um, shipping containers, we could get them behind closed doors uh, so they're out of sight. Uh, item F. Uh, that uh, item F is removing the six um, spaces that are on the southwest corner of the uh, parking lot, which would be a, right now they're located between the display area that we're adding on 108 and the three storage containers. Item G, um, that's on the the uh, one, uh, the West High Street side. Uh, that's going to be between the uh, green space on West High and the holding pen area. We've just identified that as uh, equipment display areas, uh, which now currently says snow storage. Item H, uh, we've added <coughs> six spots adjacent to where there were 18 spots uh, for um, storage of um, vehicles, whether tractors, trucks, uh, coming in and out of the, uh, uh, the, the maintenance bays. Uh, right there on the West High st Street side of the building. And um, item I, I that is the location. Th there are two ways that these folks are bringing product into the, into the facility. They're bringing on pa wooden pallets, and they're bringing on metal, uh, shipping containers that break down. I, know, I don't know if you've seen plastic ones that fold down after, after use uh, in, in preparation for shipping, uh, shipping back to wherever they came from. Um, but they have metal ones uh, and 
that area there is where these they build up in you know waiting for the next trailer truck coming to bring new product and then they haul X number of these things back when they uh, after they drop off product uh, so I is the location of where those items will be uh, do we have any that's so those are the the items that um, uh, I'm looking to uh, be approved we may have some we may have some questions uh, right now I'll open it up to the public hearing in case there's any comments anybody care to comment on this application Hello. I'm Sandy Redman and my property kind of abuts what they're doing a couple of quick questions well, what's, your, addri what's huh? your address oh it's 212 West High um, one of our questions is is you're talking about moving that bin that you've got that's on the corner of um, 108 to West High area nine out of ten times that fence is down all the yeah, time just address, horrible. The, oh, address the board nine out of ten times that fence is down and you can see everything that's inside it they tried to put material through it is there a way that they have to maintain that to make that look good because I mean going down to our houses that will look like crap like it does now out on 108 so I don't know if there's a way there's a waiver that can be done that they need to maintain that and my other question is I want to make sure there's no trees coming down between our property and their business okay if they if you can acknowledge that thank you You're welcome anybody else care to comment is there any correspondence concerning this item uh, none this evening mr. chairman this time I'll close public hearing and I'll give Mr. Genius a chance to answer the uh, concern. If you want to tip up the microphone, please. I, I do agree. Yeah, just address the board. Oh, uh, so um, the fence that they currently have for this holding area uh, is crap. Uh, I agree. Uh, so we're going to be putting a permanent structure in there uh, similar to what we're going to put around the dumpster area uh, I don't know if I have any restrictions on what that can be my assumption was it was going to be a six foot high uh, so that the mo you know, majority of people can't see over the top of that uh, what's inside the holding pen uh, so uh, I'm assuming it's color you know, I'm assuming it's going to be white. I have no idea if there's restrictions on uh, some type of fabricated, um, potentially plastic extruded, you know, fence that you, you know folks see between property, uh, people's residential properties or whatever. So that's that's the plan uh, to put in a structure like that as opposed to the current uh, structure that's there okay. and it'll and the and the trash area will be similar questions from the board mr. Richardson and mr. Berry it, it it appears to me first of all how you doing <laughs> good to see you it appears to me that this is kind of a change based on growing pains that what the original proposal was something else has been figured out to make that better and and, and I, I would agree with it in principle that you're having more visibility of your product uh, keeping the uh, the uh, the non-essentials for the product in the back area and screening it certainly is is an important part of that so um, basically on, on what you proposed I, I agree with the concept and uh, you know We'll see what anybody else has. I don't have any parking parking issues with changing that around, um, so I'm I'm good with it for the most part. Yep, Mr. Berry. Yeah, I completely agree with Mr. Richardson. It's growing pains, right? It's a it's a tough site. And you're you're right in a corner. You're uh, you're you're in a you're in a tough spot, right? Um, I'm okay with most of these requests that you have here. Um, I actually don't even mind the, the relocation of the security fence, to be honest. I know that would be the big one for me, but um, it's a bit of an eyesore where it is today. I think we can all agree on that. Um, 
I'm just trying to recall. Was the um, with the grass area? I guess it would be B on your list here. Was was that grassed prior to Patriot moving in? Yes, and, and it's still. It was. I'm sure, it's still grass now. There's a, like a, a semicircle in front of the building. Yeah, I'm trying you know, to remember. There's about um, a 10 foot bedded area where these bushes are. Uh, and then there's some grass, and it's kind of a. Yeah, and, and I'm just trying to remember years ago, back when I was very little. I, I remember when that used to be a convenience store, and I'm trying to remember. I, I, I swear we parked there in that exact spot. So I'm wondering if it was added at some point, or if that was something we did, or if it was always there, and I'm just pretending. I don't know. Um, honestly, to be frank. Yeah, I have the original print, so I can sure look at that to verify. What yeah, it's not worth it. I'm just curious if that was just something that we implemented a couple of years back. I don't remember. Um, you know, this whole site's disturbed. I mean, I, I, I don't know if it's even worth um, going crazy about saying, yeah, you know, the six parking spaces. It makes sense. I think the need is, is appropriate. Putting them in the front of the building uh, makes sense for the business. Um, I'm not going to cry over a few square feet of lost grass in this case. It's all disturbed anyway. So um, I guess I'm going to be in support of everything that he's proposed. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Horton. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I think my comments are a lot the same. Uh, I think uh, in general, I think um, the storage on site is an eyesore. I think if we can focus on improving that through screening, fencing, relocating items, I think that uh, would best suit the site. Um, I'm okay with uh, the location of the proposed three Connex boxes being uh, behind, we'll call it behind the, the building. Um, I think that locating them there is uh, probably the best location for the site, being out of site. Um, so I think um, <clears throat> I kind of um, I think your plan lacks uh, some detail as well, meaning uh, location of the dumpster pad and the detail. It will be need will need to be um, a dumpster pad and shielding or fencing, screening around the dumpster pad as well. So pad as opposed to asphalt. I had planned on just paving. Uh, Director Mears, which is what is that? Now. I believe that's a requirement, right? Mm -hmm. uh, a dumpster. He's tr he's proposing to relocate it okay. uh, to a different spot on site, um, but it will be on impervious surface. Okay. And it will re be required to be screened for the regulations. So that's that's a concrete pad. Is that what we're saying? Like the uh, impervious, it's not asphalt. It could, it could be either. What's that? What's that? So pavement, pavement is impervious. So pavement with screaming, it, with screening. That's what he's asking. Yeah. Is, okay. is so that's the direction we're going. Correct. Yeah. So, that, that, so that, the dumpster will be required to be screened. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, but I think that's that's really my highlighted points here. Is is if we can kind of like uh, the butter kind of alluded to, driving by, it kind of is. Um, uh, in disarray, growing pains, as some would call it, for sure. But uh, I think if we can focus on, you know, curb appeal and um, screening, that would be um, most warranted in my case. So, I understood. Spartan. I just want to make sure we confirm for the abutter that no trees are going to be removed affecting her property's view. You know, there are there are no trees currently on the on the. Uh, where the asphalt pavement is going to be re uh, removed and re recycled and relayed. So. That's it. Any other questions on board? <coughs> Mr. Haberman. Yeah, as the abutter uh, brought up a concern about the uh, maintaining of the screening, if that could be done, I'm sure. I, I do or the new stuff here. Uh, well, I, I, I do have a question about that. Uh, one of the, er, and I didn't have this in here because I just thought of it, uh, with the, uh, with a plastic non-see-through type fence, the vines that were requested to put along, I, I think we assumed that that was a chain link fence, would those vines be required in a non-see-through type fence? Uh, I think the intent was to try and screen, so I I would say they wouldn't have to be required. But I'll leave that up to the board. Another, <laughs> is that going to require another 
waiver because it is on the original site plan no but uh i'm glad that you mentioned it while you're at the planning board yeah, tonight I, I uh uh, so originally there was uh, a chain link fence along the Route 108 uh, property and there was supposed to be some vegetation uh, planted to kind of screen that area and that was never done. Instead they put up a sort of mesh material. Uh, so he's asking if it would be okay to remove that. Uh, I think the intent was to not be able to see through that area from the planning board. So I'm going to have a non-see-through plastic fabricated um, fence that we're familiar with. Okay. Mr. Haberman, you all set? You're good? Yes. I don't, I don't know if that answered your question. But. Yes, it does. And, and I guess, uh, like I said, as long as it's uh, maintained. So um, what I think is going on is uh, why it does get destroyed is snow removal and right. being... Uh, it's not permanent. It's yeah. So this is going to be, you know, the intent. You know, I'm trying to help these guys out. You know, they're start. They're start. They're a basically a startup, and now they get tractor supply and MB tractor down the street. So mm -hmm. you know, we're trying to raise the bar here. Yeah, I understand. It's been a long time. Mr. Bomo, you all set? Bomo on the comment if there's any. Okay. Any further questions from the board? Entertain a motion for regional impact. Mr. Richardson. There is no regional impact. Motion made by Mr. Richardson, seconded by Mr. Berry. Any discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Motion passes. Next, we'll get into waiver request. Entertain a motion for uh, waiver number one. Mr. Horton. Um, for discussion purposes. Um, I'll make the motion that the storage boxes, excuse me, let me back up. Table 483, line 15, footnote 7 of the zoning ordinance um, this, about the storage boxes. So I'll make a motion that the request of Hanson Corner Realty LLC to allow the three 8 foot by 24 foot storage containers be allowed more than one, uh, be more than. Be allowed for more than one, be allowed at the board to determine the time length. And um, I think we should probably uh, discuss that. So I would say that we make a motion for discussion purposes that they're not allowed more than three years. Motion made by Mr. Horton. Is there a second? Second by Mr. Haberman. Discussion. Mr. Belmore. Yeah, I think um, I'll be abstaining on all the votes as we move forward unless I hear something that sways me otherwise. Uh, I I think I agree with the concept of everything he's asking for, perhaps, but I can't quite follow it because uh, I almost think I shouldn't have made the motion to accept it as complete because we're modifying a site plan, yet we don't have a new site plan. We just have some circles related to the paper. so. You know, I, I agree. I would probably grant most, if not all, the waivers and the site plan, but I, I don't, I, I can't quite follow it. So um, I'm a little confused because I agree with the concepts, but I, I, I don't have enough information in front of me to really follow what's going to, what the new site plan looks like. So that's my explanation. Any further discussion? I'll just piggyback off of that. That was a lot of my same concern here as well, is that the really the uh, site plan lacked additional detail that, that he was offering or explaining other than, you know, uh, letters in circles. So I agree with you, Bob. I wish you would kind of had said that earlier. Um, but uh, I think the intent here is that, you know, he is making the, the um, he's doing his due diligence to make improvements to the site. No further discussion. 
Any further comments from the board? Mr. Haberman. Yeah, I, I agree with the other two members that we uh, clean up the drawing so it's more uh, legible and you can actually uh, tell what's really going on in more detail. Any further comments? I'll make a oh, good. Um, I'd like to resend my motion for the Connex boxes. Are you resending it? I am, yes. Okay. I need a second. I need the second to do that as well. A motion to rescind the waiver request uh, made by Mr. Horton. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Haberman. Discussion? Mr. Richardson. Sure, so uh, I, I want to hear from more board members personally. So if we feel that these plans should be updated to be more specific on what the applicant is requesting, uh, I would be I would entertain that discussion or if there's another board member that would like to um, provide a motion for the waivers I would uh, uh, I would uh, hear that as well I'm sorry just to be clear you're rescinding it on the issue of whether it's complete or not because we already voted on that we did we did vote that the application is complete I rescinded my motion for the um, three-year extension of the Connex boxes Okay. Any further discussion? All of those in favor of uh, Mr. Horton rescinding the motion, raise your right hand. Opposed? So the motion is rescinded. At this point, does anybody have a motion for a continuance or uh, or for the waiver request? So, so just discussion. So, Mr. Barry. so at this point, so now we're 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 just saying that the application is not complete. Because if you're saying that if you're not if you're not comfortable about the drawing, then a site plan is part of the drawing. Okay. So I just want to make point of order. Okay. Um, personally, I'm okay with that. I would like to see a formal site plan, something a little bit better than just a circle. Um, even just rectangles would probably be better. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying we need a, a, an engineer's drawing, but I, I, would that be would that be acceptable to you? It, it would, and I think that's what the point Bob was making here as, as well is um, a little more detail and clarity. Yeah, I think for me that would also go a long way as well. Mr. Richardson, I, I get it, but my my point is we've already voted on it, so is that the vote that needs to be retaken? I would say no because the the application should, would just be continued to the next meeting for reasons we specify. But we're requesting more to be added to the site plan to be complete. I'm confused. I mean, that's why I'm that's why I voted against it because I I, I think we need to go well, back to the continue for more detail. I would imagine. I, I, un I understand. I understand for. that, but I think we need to go back to the motion where we already voted it to as complete. It already passed. Is yeah, it already has. So I don't know how we pass it and then ask for more. Can you can you can you rescind a acceptance? A motion to to rescind acceptance. I don't know if that's. You could make a motion to do that, or so, you could continue it. I yeah, think. Per personally, I mean, I'll speak for myself. I mean, you, you guys can do what you want, but I, I would say continuing would make sense. We're asking for additional information, um, so I'm I'm getting the read from the room that we don't want to proceed on the waiver request until we have a clear drawing in front of us. I think that's a fair request. So. Uh, Maybe for the sake of putting it out there, so I would like to make a motion, right? So Barry. I would like to make a motion to continue to next month's meeting um, in lieu of having a updated drawing presented to the planning board. Motion made by Mr. Barry. For what? 
um, specifically to draw in the screen. items that you're referring to. It's something a little bit cleaner than just circles. Dimensions. dimensions yeah, just a, a rough are idea. Dimensional requirements that, that um, are required for this that I'm not so, aware of. For example, you want to put in a, a dumpster pad. Well, you want to put in a dumpster enclosure, right? So we'd like to know where that is, how big it's going to be, um, you know, where, where the line's going to be for item H. Um, you, you folks have, deter, have directed me on what has to go into that, that uh, controlled area, and now I, but now I have to tell you the size of it. Is that what I'm, is that what I'm hearing? Yes. You've already given, there's information in here that is directing me on what to do. But that's not acceptable. Well, Mr. Uh, Belmore, comment? Yeah, question for Director Mayors. This is a recorded site plan. Correct. So don't we need a new engineered site plan to take the place of this site plan and record it? Sometimes we do not require updated site plans with engineers depending on the level of detail uh, I think this probably does warranty warrant uh, engineered plans this, this is quite quite a bit of changes uh, again I'm uh, I, I think I'm in favor of most if not all of them but um, we need to record a new site plan I would think and I don't think we can record what he gave us and if he changes circles to boxes I don't know that that's gonna work either uh, I, I they don't have any demarcation of anything other than looking at the paper that helped for me to understand the concepts but then I don't see a plan so, so mr. Barry if you want to restate your motion yeah so okay so I'll, I'll keep the same motion but with the amendment of having a a engineer drafted up or at least a is to uh, uh, Mr. Belmore, you're saying an engineer should should draft it. I'm just, I'm just giving my opinion. And I seem like the board is willing to approve it, which was going to be fine with me if you felt the level of detail you got was enough. Again, but personally, I wasn't. I didn't feel a level of comfort where I could do that. Um, you know, you might want to consider. Somebody might want to consider pending a question of the director. Uh, if we're going to require. A, a, a truly amended site plan that we can record you might want to just deny the application I don't know that we can continue it and, and get a new application mm -hmm. uh, but that's mm -hmm. not my call it's the, the you know purview of the board and any direction director mayors can give us uh, that would be uh, one way to move forward uh, balls in my court awesome but the applicant would have to re-notice uh, if it was denied. Abutters. Do, do you have a preference which way you would like to go, given the conversation? Uh, we don't want to speak for you. What, what would you prefer? I would like you to approve it as is. And, and for, so I, this is my problem. I'm currently under, what am I under? I'm under legal something or other from the city of Somersworth because of they're not in compliance with the approved site plan so uh, they're uh, we're working with code enforcement on the issues at the site uh, that they did not complete as part of the 2000 or 2021 approval back in March but the code enforcement uh, would be willing to work with the applicant now that you're in front of the planning board so step one of this, I'm, a, I'm in a position where I've, I've contracted with KC Paving to re, um, grind up the asphalt and re regrade and resurface the parking lot. That's step one to improve the appearance of the, the property. That would not require site plan approval to repave the site unless uh, he was going to change the pavement areas, which is, which is what he was proposing. That's A, and, that's A and B on this. Right. It, it seems like to me the heartburn is C and E. Right. The location of that fence. So I'd like to know how big it is, where it is. 
Um, and maybe the answer is not. We don't need an engineering drawing, but at least we need, some, we need something saying, hey, it's going to be, you know, this far from the corner of the building. Uh, I mean, if you guys feel that an engineering... I guess at this point, hired, if you want to state what you want for a motion, hmm. we'll look for a second, then we'll have the discussion. Okay. Right, right. Now, I love you guys. I'm happy to come back with something that I can <laughs> spend a lot of money on. Yeah. But right now, I want to get the, uh, the parking lot paid before winter. So that's my objective here. Mr. Barry, the Okay, all right. Shows. I'm, I'm going to try. Let, let's spitball. Let's see if anybody agrees with me here. Okay. So I would like to see an engineering drawing, but I get it. It doesn't, it might not make sense for you. So I would say I propose, or should I say I make a motion, um, that the areas that where you're, you're moving, like, for example, specifically C and E, and I'd even be so bold to say the um, the storage containers, I guess that would be D of your proposal. I'd like to get some dimensions of where they are on this drawing with some with some arrows and some some distances so that we understand where it is in space um, in lieu of an engineering drawing. So, so I... So you, you continue to the ne next meeting? Conti until? Continue to the next meeting with, with some proper markups on this drawing. Motion made by Mr. Uh, Barry. Is there a second? Second by Mr. Haverman. Discussion, Look, Mr. Richardson. The new factor that right now they're not in compliance. Um, that's regrettable, but because of that, I would like to see a. I mean, personally, I'm, that that just flipped me in this whole thing. I would I would like to see um, concrete drawings. So if we pass it. We then know whether there is a violation or not. Just something that's drawn up with a, you know, with measurements here and there. I don't think that's enough because it, it's if there's a non-compliance now, it's not going to help us just to have an informal kind of drawing. So that's my feeling there. So what I'm hearing is my hands will be tied on the dimensions that I I end up with. I have to determine that ahead of time you know, for this pen. Mr. Abin? Yeah, so the term I, I generally use a lot is uh, clear, concise, and measurable. That's generally how I, we like to see the drawings. So it's clear to everybody, measurable to the board and general public. Any further comment, Mr. Belmore? Uh, never mind. The Ms. Barry. Just one more statement. You know, it, to me, it's just about the engineering, right? You know, it's, um, I get it. It's not, it, to, I can see in your eyes, it's probably not a high value um, thing. You're saying, I'm just putting a fence up. I'm, I'm paving, I'm putting a fence up. Um, I, I get that. I see value in that. And, and I see where everybody else is coming from. They want the engineer to draw it because then they're going to say, here, X, Y. This is where this is where that box is going to be, and I get it for for recording for code enforcement. It makes a lot of sense to do that. And to be frank, for any site plan, we would require an engineer to do it. You know, and that's for me. I'm torn because I, I feel for you. I understand you came in. You said, "Look, I want to do A, B, C, D, and X," um, and that's why I'm stalling because 99 percent of the time I say engineering drawing, period. But I understand that now when you bring an engineer into it, now you're dealing with the engineering costs that are that are with that, and it's time. Um, it's code enforcement, right? So for me, I'm, I'm conflicted in this. I want to say engineer, but at the same time, I don't. Um, so I'm tempted to hear what everyone else has to say, and maybe I'll make my call from that. Any further comments from the board? All those in favor of continuing till next month, raise your right hand. Hmm? We did have a second from Ms. Abel. All those in favor of continuing the next month, raise your right hand. Opposed? Abstain? A motion passes. It's continued to the next meeting. Just a point of order, because I'm sure he's confused, because I'm confused now, too. So, so, we, so we, we just push it to the next meeting, but based on what? Is, is he going to come back with an engineer's drawing, or is he come back with his own, his own clean version that he's marked up? Can we clarify that before he leaves? But we continued, but continued to what? We, I don't know what the answer is. What's he coming back with next month? Either a waiver request for engineered plans or engineered plans. An additional waiver request and updated plans. 
Okay. Does that makes sense. I, I have to say something. I, I, I will say that I didn't dream this up myself. I got direction on what to provide you folks. So based on that, I'm very confused. Uh, I will say that I am going to proceed with the contract that I have. I have to get a IDA sidewalk in, and I still have to come in and talk to the engineer about that. And I'm going to proceed. I have to, you know, it's, it isn't going to happen this year if, if I wait for another month. So, uh, and I think everybody in this board wants that parking lot resurfaced because that is step, that's the building block for whatever else I do. So, uh, to direct me as did you? Police after me. <laughs> direct me as did you mention something about you could proceed with the. He could proceed. That's not a requirement to have a fully engineered plan to re uh, well, to repave. What A and B is what I. That's why Raleigh Junados came in here. The other seven things were the Patriot folks. I'm trying to get the damn parking lot paved, and A and B were part of. Is that you need more detail on A and B? That, that, you know, that's. Can I at least get that? Move to be at least legally move forward so you don't throw me in jail here next month. You'll be able to work with uh, Mr. Janitis, Director Mears? So, A is I'm requesting the grass area shown on sheet C2 by balloon be eliminated for two reasons. The green space will add cost to the project and granite curbing will need to be installed. The green space will serve as a barrier to the natural flow of rain and snow. And in lieu of green space in front of the building adjacent to the two handicapped spaces, I would like to add four to five parking spaces as shown on C2 by Balloon B. Uh, I did not feel comfortable doing this administratively, so that's why I, uh, that is back at the planning board. But if the planning board tonight votes that that's okay, I'm, I'm fine with that. So at this point, would we have a continuance to the next month? Yep. Okay. Thank I, you. I, I'll be in to see you to try to figure out what what these guys want. That's all I can tell you. Thank you. Thank you. Next item for E. Great Falls Pickleball LLC is seeking design review of an athletic fitness facility use indoor pickleball facility on a property located at 136 Route 108 in the commercial industrial CI district, assesses map 64, lot 07, site number 23-2024. Director Mayers? Yes, thank you very much. The applicant is proposing uh, to demo the existing single family structure and construct an athletic facility use indoor pickleball facility at the property located in the commercial industrial district residential single family. The property abuts a non-conforming uh, residential uses, where a commercial use is proposed to abut a residential use on a property less than four acres with a building height greater than uh, 20 feet. A Class B buffer yard is required. I provided some information regarding the Class uh, B buffer, buffer yard. Uh, this is a design review phase. We did notify abutters uh, regarding this a project to see if we could get any abutter input. Um, so the board should make a determination that the design review process of an application uh, has ended and provide some feedback regarding the buffer yard requirement. This is just conceptual at this point. So there's no application for, for complete, no. no. Okay. This time I'd like to invite uh, Mr. Bruton to make his presentation. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Uh, my name is FX Bruton. I'm with Bruton and Barraby in Dover. I'm here representing the applicant and the owner. Uh, with me tonight is Kevin McEnany of Civil Works uh, Engineering Firm. And uh, we have the pleasure of bringing to you, as Director Mears mentioned, on a de design review basis, a conceptual plan for a athletic facility which would have within it pickleball. Um, one thing I want to point out just right out of the gate is what we provided to you in terms of a plan 
um, showed you basically the interior. So this is a fully enclosed site. It does appear, if, if you look at it in a different light, that this would be something that was either covered or outside. And so I wanted to start with the fact that this is not the case. There are pickleball facilities locally, and you may have read in the paper, that are creating some issues with respect to noise. We fully, completely understand that. We have no interest in outdoor pickleball courts. Um, this is obviously a unique property. This is a property that's in uh, the CI zone partially. Um, there's also, it's a split lot, and in the back is a residential portion within this lot. And obviously there are residential uh, uses around the area, so we're sensitive to that. The project as presented um, does meet all the zoning requirements in terms of setbacks, um, but you have a provision in your ordinance that I'm going to talk about that relates to landscape buffer. So when we submitted the project, we didn't provide distances, and so um, I actually had Kevin plot those out so that you could all at least see what distances we're talking about. So if he could pass that around, um, that would be great. Uh, the, the plan itself doesn't change. We just added a little bit more in terms of uh, distances uh, between the parking area and the building so you can get a sense of what we're looking at. So um, it, this is about two and a half acres, this lot. Uh, it's one of the larger lots in that particular area. Um, obviously, the city zoned this as basically a commercial industrial with the intent that there would be commercial and or industrial uses. Uh, one of the uses could be a gas station and it could fit nicely uh, in here. Um, obviously, we're not looking to do that. Uh, but um, because it uh, also abuts non-conforming residential uses, additional landscape buffering is called for in your ordinance. So just to put it in context, the setbacks are, uh, I believe side yard setbacks are 30 feet, which would be met. Um, but the buffering requirement, uh, because you have a formulaic approach to that, uh, results in a class B buffer, which is 50 feet uh, for, for the building and 35 feet for the parking areas. So there's two numbers involved, but it's a landscape buffer. It's not a setback. So I think I just wanted to kind of emphasize that that was the case. So just to kind of sum up what that impact would be on this plan that you now have, um, you can see on, and, and I'm going to always, I don't use north and south because I don't, I can't figure it out, but I can do left and right. So if I'm standing at the road, the left side of the property, you can see the parking is as close as 15.1 feet. Uh, on the right side of the property, you can see uh, that the parking is roughly uh, 12, excuse me, not roughly, but is 12 feet, and that's a drive aisle. Um, what we're showing on this plan is that at that 17 parking spaces along the back, that would not be constructed. That would be if needed. So we'd like to bring to the planning board a sense, rather than come back for an amended site plan, uh, bring to the planning board a sense of what uh, we would have as basically paper street parking, if you will, so that if it was necessary, uh, then we would utilize it. But if it's not, we wouldn't. Uh, but in any event, um, pretty basic layout, eight courts on the inside, uh, an area uh, involving a uh, changing area, uh, ba basic, you know, concessions with machines, not not a bar, this is not a bar or anything like that. Uh, just, you know, walking in, checking in, all that. And then the parking in the front. So that's the basic layout of that. And again, in the back, um, we show 30 feet on the left-hand side uh, of the building to the property line. Uh, but this is a very odd little chunk of land right here. This is a triangle. So with your own uh, setbacks, nothing ever would really even go in there. So it's really not affecting anything there. Uh, we did talk to one of the abutters who was a renter who was excited by the project. We tried to 
knock on the door on the left side and uh, we didn't make that connection. But one of the reasons we wanted this to be design review instead of preliminary concept conceptual is because that requires the abutters to be noticed, which we wanted to do. We wanted to hear any comments, uh, obviously, from you, but also the abutters with respect to the project. There was a concern by one of the abutters in the back who's actually a resident of Dover. The city lines meet here, and um, an elderly woman, identified as elderly, so I'll point that out. Um, and uh, she uh, raised concerns with respect to noise, uh, but again, she raised concerns with respect to only the car. But I wasn't sure if that letter, which will be read into the record tonight, um, re uh, was a misunderstanding that maybe there's outdoor pickleball. There isn't, so we wanted to, again, reemphasize that and make that clear. Um, her house, we've calculated roughly, is more than 100 uh, feet away, um, and it's not, it, something commercial has to go in this property, and obviously you zoned it for that. Uh, so we, we don't think that um, the issues that were raised will um, preclude us from moving forward. Uh, but again, we want to be sensitive to the neighbors that are next to us. And what isn't depicted on the plan is what we would also add, which is uh, fencing along both sides, uh, the right and the left, so that uh, we can uh, provide that kind of opaque buffer as well. Uh, and uh, I think your regulation, if you read the last line, says uh, at least have that. So we kind of wanted to address that, but we wanted to do it anyway. Uh, it makes a lot of sense to do that. And that would extend all the way back into the property, uh, basically where the building starts. Um, and if, you know, there's obviously a process to go through, and if there's uh, more comments or improvements that we can make, um, it's likely not to be a problem because we want it to be a nice facility. Uh, the need is um, is out there. There's there's this is a location where there isn't this kind of facility, um, and um, a lot of people have expressed interest in utilizing it. So uh, we think it's a great fit for that area, and uh, we think it can be buffered well. And really, the only relief we would need is those waivers from you. We don't need to go to the ZBA. Uh, but the waivers uh, with respect to the landscaping, and uh, we think we can provide for that and provide the opaque buffering that is not only required, but makes sense to us. So uh, we look at it as a very positive thing to bring. Obviously, it's close to the world-famous Summersworth Dome, so it kind of fits in with more athletic facilities uh, kind of located near each other, which is kind of nice. Uh, but it's not a dome, it's a uh, uh, engineer, it would be an engineered uh, building, uh, pre, uh, metal building uh, with a nice facade and obviously you guys would have a lot to say about how that looks at the end of the day. Um, but we want it to look nice, we want it to be very attractive um, and um, nice for the area as well. So the purpose of this is on a non-binding basis for both sides to hash it out and get some in, impact uh, or input from you and obviously the butters. So I'll uh, stop talking and answer any questions you have or sit down and just listen. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Open public hearing. Does anybody have care to comment on this application? Um, Patricia and this is John Eaton we live at 73 Old Rochester Road in Dover so we're right um, we would be right behind the, um, the building but since I didn't see this I wasn't sure um, if the entrance would be off Route 108 or is there an entrance on 73 Old Ro I mean Old Rochester Road and also um, 
Yeah, if you want to speak into Mike, please. Uh, the facility, uh, is it 24-7 or is it from, I say, you want, to, If you want to address the board, 8 please. 8 to 10.30, sorry. <laughs> Didn't know what the houring, the hour was. <laughs> the hours. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, yeah, I'm a big pickleball fan, so. <laughs> so I don't have a problem it. with it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I know we could just jump our fence. <laughs> yeah, we could just go through the fence and we're um, there. So, um, our neighbor was the one that she she did call me and yeah. she expressed um, she said it would be noisy and I said well you wouldn't hear it because it's inside, um, but she was concerned about like cars slamming doors all night. <laughs> so I said well I don't think it would be late either, maybe ten at the most. I'm not sure ten p.m. at the most. So. Yeah, and I see what they're talking about. I mean, my neighbor, Paul, her name's Paula, and um, her backyard, she only has so much of it cleared. So she has quite amount of footage before they have their setback and there's trees, you know what I mean? So I I don't see I don't see a problem with it. Um, I'd give them thumbs up, go for it, and um, it's, it, it is in a decent spot. And is also the house that needs to be taken down for this facility to work. I, I think it's a good thing. I think hey, just for the record, if you want to just state your name and your address. Uh, my name's John Eaton. I'm at 730 Rochester. I'm in that uh, road in Dover. Dover. I'm right on the line, right? You know, Summersworth, Dover line. Okay. And we are right next door to Paula, who is, you know, we're right there. It's, we're kind of on that property line. Okay. So that's it. Thank, Thank you. you. Anybody else care to comment on this design review, actually? Do you have any correspondence, Director Mears? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this was submitted today, uh, September 18th. Uh, this is an abutter at 75 Old Rochester Road, Dover, New Hampshire. Uh, to Summersworth Planning Board, I am unable to attend tonight's meeting. I want to inform you of my disapproval of this project. At almost 85, I am not happy at the thought of hearing car doors slamming and engines starting up day and night in my backyard. I am sure it will be a well lit at night as well. This disturbs my peaceful area and that I enjoy now. The assessors in their wisdom have just increased my property value, adding injury to insult. It has devalued my property. Who will want to, who will want a home with a uh, pickleball facility or a parking lot in their backyard. So this has caused Dover property to be devalued. It seems to me land could be better used for elderly housing. Really a pickleball facility in the woods? Please consider carefully the impact on others. Sincerely, Paula Boyer. And any other correspondence? None this evening, Mr. Chairman. Seeing none, close public hearing. And let Mr. Uh, Bruton rebut uh, definitely not 24 hours a day um, we'd like to work with you in terms of the hours of operation but it gets busy at you know the early uh, hours for sure and then after work kind of hours so it's an athletic facility um, it's not where people are bringing kids for soccer on a Saturday um, but it's you know the works is out there and they have those kind of hours and kind of usage it's probably going to be similar to that but we haven't defined it specifically but definitely not 24 7 the lighting in the back obviously would only be for security there's no interest in going in the back um, and if everything obviously would be back back shielded and, and all that good stuff so I think it will be very sensitive to the neighbors and um, you know if if you think of if you think of yourself and your your own house and you get in your car early because you happen to go to work early like I do, you you don't think that you're waking up your neighbors. You know you're not ripping a chainsaw and all that stuff. So I think it I think it will play out very well. We're really looking forward to coming back with um, elevations for you to look at, um, front designs, uh, motifs, and and working with you to to make it really good. It's really important for us to get a general sense that um, before we get into the heavy engineering and are committed, and again, this is a permitted use, we do kind of want to get your feedback uh, to, to talk to us about these landscape buffers because um, that's the only really form of relief we'll need. And uh, we'd really like to understand what you have to say about it. 
Uh, it will be helpful to us. It will be completely non-binding on you. We get it. We understand that. But it definitely would be helpful uh, for us to hear some thoughts on that. And then, like I said, you know, we'll we'll go and do the the whole deal, and and you'll have a chance to rip it apart again. And again, this is completely non-binding, so wouldn't hold you to it. But we respect you, and we want to get your general thoughts on that. Mr. Witham. Thank you. Um, big broad brush, I think I support this. Uh, thank you for noting that it's inside. I thought the, the building where the like office and the lounge and yeah. the locker rooms was the indoor and the rest was outdoor. So I went on to like the it U.S. Pickleball Association yeah. website and there's a whole thing there about how to manage noise and decibel levels. Um, if I realized it was inside, I would have saved half an hour of my life uh, doing all this research. So I'll th throw that away because I think that issue is gone because, as, as you noted, uh, the, the noise of pickleball uh, can be very disruptive to neighbors. So being indoors uh, addresses the biggest concern that I had. Uh, can you give me a sense, uh, Mr. Bruton, where on Route 108 this is? So if, uh, is yeah. it just north of... So if you're at the Shell Station, yep. go three houses toward the dome. Got it. On the left-hand side, there's a white house there now. It. It's a very oddly shaped white house. Got it. But it's two and a half acres. It's one of the largest lots out there. It's very sure. interesting sure. lot. <laughs> um, I, I think in terms of the, 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 the buffer yard requirement, yeah, you talk about <coughs> using fencing. I think that helps a lot, some sort of uh, opaque fencing that really can shield from sound and light. Uh, if there were opportunities to include some sort of vegetation along that fence line that softens it uh, yet more. Uh, I, I think because of how close it is, uh, maybe eight foot fence versus six foot, uh, I think is uh, appropriate. I, I think once you get to where the building is beyond the parking lot, you could probably step it back. Uh, but uh, I, I think a higher fence might help us with some of that noise buffering. I just throw that out there, but I think some some plantings along the fence line would would help uh, also to the degree that you could fit something. Yeah, in there. it makes a lot of sense. Uh, can, can I just ask? I know in other communities that six is the highest and eight is not allowed. Is it eight allowed permitted in Summersworth? I think it is. Eight is allowed here. Okay, great. Yeah, that's not a problem at all. So, and then uh, in terms of the parking lot along the side, I, I like getting the approval to do that. If not right away, down the road. Uh, I, I certainly wouldn't want to see us uh, allowing parking on like an unimproved area over there. Right. So uh, planning ahead, I think, makes sense. Mm. Uh, and uh, I would welcome uh, approving that as part of this as a concept design type of thing. I don't know how we'd work that into our conditions of approval. But well, we'll put it on an engineering plan for sure. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. Uh, and again, the design of the building, uh, the 108 corridor, uh, we, we routinely grant waivers for building materials. Uh, again, where this is going to be a prefabricated metal building, that will require a waiver. But we do typically look at the curb appeal of those. So uh, being mindful of that, uh, I think, is important in terms of color, maybe some banding, uh, some, some elements of interest just to kind of soften it up a little bit. Seems to make sense to me. Other than that, I'm fine with this. Thank you. Mr. Richardson and Mr. Berry. Good evening. Um, I agree with a lot of what Mr. Witham had to say, uh, especially with the eight-foot fence. I have, at that point, I don't have a problem with the parking on the right-hand side at all, the way you've drawn it up. This is one of those areas where, and, and we've touched on it, both yourself and, and Mr. Witham, um, we we have a tendency along Route 108 to, to waive that New England style architecture, but this is kind of in that buffer zone area where you do have housing. Um, and I, I would hope that in your drawing that you would give some consideration to that. To, to be, um, I, I mean, I, I think you're going to have to be creative. From what you, from what you described, to me, that doesn't cut it with New England style. So I think that you you need to be a little bit creative um, on, on getting closer to that than we've given waivers for, for elsewhere along Route 108 because there is housing. And I'd like it to fit in more with that. I mean, I, I don't know how the neighbors 
right here feel about that, but that's just my own feeling. So I don't know. Yeah, how they're other on board members. They're feel. on the other side, though. They're okay. they're in the back, so okay. they don't care what the front looks like. But I get it. I get what you're saying, and yeah. and I think uh, it kind of reminds me of how you guys dealt with long ago and far away. Um, the Staples Building uh, had some some elements there that yeah. were faux, but trying to bring in what you're saying. So I, I understand what you're saying. Okay. I appreciate Thank that. You. Mr. Berry? Yes, thank you. Um, firstly, I love the idea. Um, you know, as a former racquetball player, the seeing court clubs come back, yeah, that's awesome. Um, yeah, it's, it's nice to see. You know, pickleball's a new sport. It's hot. Uh, it's good to see something, that, that sport, entering our area. We don't really have much of it. Um, I mean, it's, it's a good site. It's a good place to put it. Um, you know, the only thing that really that we just got to be careful of is, you know, th whatever I tell anybody when they come before us is be a good neighbor, right? Um, to the abutter that wrote today, um, we hear you. We understand. We sympathize with you. It, it stinks. Nobody wants to see their, their, their neighboring property get developed. Happened to me over on, uh, over on Green Street with the development across the street, and it turned out to be really, really nice, you know? Um, uh, the builder took my concerns into consideration, um, and they really made it about the neighborhood, not about just them. So be a good steward of your property. Listen to your listen to your butters, and let them be a part of your design process. Can't if I can't emphasize that enough. Um, as far as the design, personally, I don't really have a problem with the buffer yard. You know, um, put whatever you can between that parking lot and that house. Emphasize on that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm glad that you guys have neighbors in the back that are very pro court club. That's awesome. Um, it will be a little bit easier, but yeah, definitely um, have that meeting, talk to the abutters, listen to them, work with the neighborhood. And I also agree with uh, Mr. Richardson, use your best judgment, build something appropriate as far as your facades. All right. Beyond that, good luck. I look forward to seeing you soon. I did the permitting on Green Street, so I, I know. I know what you mean by that. <laughs> yeah, the comments from the board. Pardon. I'll just add uh, to my uh, my uh, thoughts and comments reflect what's already been said. But uh, I think you know you're doing Horton? your. Horton. I just. I'm, I apologize. <laughs> I thought you said Horton. Barden. <laughs> I'm a tennis player, but uh, fear not. <laughs> I'm uh, not one of those uh, hostile to pickleball. I've actually uh, played myself and also enjoy the sport. And uh, I also, actually, as a tennis player, selfishly uh, relish th this project because of its potential to preemptively absorb the demand for uh, repurposing tennis courts for pickleball, which is um, mm. now a great source of tension between the tennis and pickleball communities. <laughs> so as pickleball grows in popularity here, um, this will actually, I think, meaningfully alleviate that. So there's that to recommend it. My question actually comes from my experience growing up in Maine playing tennis uh, indoors during the winter. My hometown had an indoor tennis facility um, which, for reasons I'm still not aware of, had um, a highly truncated playing area, meaning that the distance between the baseline of the court and the yeah. backstop next to the building wall was uh, shorter. So um, when you would back up for a ball, you would actually often slam into it. So I'm wondering um, if the initially proposed dimensions for pickleball, I, I don't know the standard dimensions for indoor pickleball courts, are one that would provide a um, standard yep. um, buffer zone between the baseline and the backstop for a Can player comfort. That. Yeah, so there's two, uh, and Dave probably knows this because he went did the research, but there's two basic court sizes. This is the larger one. The other thing, and I grew up with it in a town where there was tennis as well indoor, but it was the bubble, which is hilarious, uh, unbelievable, right? I mean, you can't even count <laughs> And we used to bump into the bubble because it was a slope. So what we considered was a bubble, but then we decided, no, that's, that's not going to, architecturally, we didn't really want to do that for this area. Um, but we also didn't want to bump into the back walls. So we took the larger scale uh, for the court um, out of the two because it could you can do design it smaller. So we are, plus the game is different. You don't stand 
generally outside of the box, whereas in tennis you do. So everything kind of dovetails pretty nicely in this in this one. That's it. Oh, so and, I, and one more comment. I mean, that's an important issue that you raise because the tennis is not bothering communities, but there's now a new uh, case that arose in the last month where a community may be sued because they were trying to do something nice, which was open their tennis courts to pickleball. And all of the, there was a nurse who can't sleep now because of it, because she works at night. And so, yeah, so we, we purposely took that into account because we could have, you know, asked for a variance to go into the residential in the back. Maybe, probably wouldn't get it, but you could ask for it. And intentionally we didn't because we don't want to be back there with those kind of noises and those kind of problems. So in any event, that's a, it's a good point though because tennis is getting swallowed up. Mr. Warden? Thank you. Um, my comments are just going to reflect what's already been said. I think, uh, you know, putting this uh, proposal out to notify butters is just, you know, a smart move and hearing their feedback. Um, I think, you know, if we focus on what you can do for buffering is going to be key here and, and being a good neighbor. I like the comments, uh, you know, that uh, kind of tries to incorporate some of the architecture from surrounding homes into, you know, maybe softening its architecture, you know, is a great uh, point and idea to bring forward. So, um, but other than that, I think it's a, a valued added product project here. So great. Thank you. Any further comments from the board? Is there any action need to be taken at this point? You could decide that design review is over. Um, if you don't, then I would come back for that because eventually you need to make that. That's for the city's benefit. Um, so we're okay. I, I, I would move that the uh, design review process for this uh, applicant has been completed and uh, appropriate feedback has been provided to the applicant. Motion made by Mr. Witham. Second. Second by Mr. Belmore. Discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Great. Thank you very much. We really Motion appreciate passes. It. Thank you. Any new business that comes before the board? None this evening, Mr. Chairman. None this evening. At this time? Okay. Any workshop business? None this evening. Uh, did you get an email for oh. possible October? October workshop with the Mayor's Housing Task Force at 545 to discuss uh, the accessory dwelling units. Thank you. I forgot about that. You're welcome. So hopefully. Yeah. So everybody have that, 545? If you don't, like the, October, if you don't you like the idea, throw eggs at my house because it was my idea. <laughs> Any other workshop business? None this evening. Communications and miscellaneous. Mr. Witham. If uh, Code could uh, take a look at the Lilac City Car Wash on High Street, when we approved the pedestal mounted solar panel project there. They were required to plant, I think it was four or maybe six lilac bushes along Penny Lane. I was reminded of it tonight with the project. Uh, the lilac bushes they planted were about yay tall. I think they've now since been mowed over. They're not there anymore. So they're more than dead, they're gone. So uh, I think our condition was that they stay alive. So yes. uh, they could replant said lilac bushes that would be awesome. Any other communications miscellaneous? Mr. Barry. Yep, just a reminder, uh, we have our Don't Trash Summersworth coming up this weekend on Saturday, 2 o'clock, uh, over at the Public Works building at 18 Lilac Lane. So look for me. I'll be running it this month. Thank you. Mr. Horton. Just real quick, um, several of us took a tour of the new Sports Dome yesterday, and uh, pretty impressive. Great to see projects coming right along real good um, so um, I think uh, that's a win overall and uh, looking forward to seeing it um, right down to completion so that's all I got and again I'd like to welcome Mr. Barden to his first meeting I don't know if you have any comment for this evening 
Uh, this was a fun meeting. <laughs> and uh, thank you for the welcome, everyone. Well, welcome Glad aboard. To be here. <laughs> Any other communications in miscellaneous? If not, does anybody have a motion? Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn by Mr. Barry, second by Mr. Belmore. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Thank you very much.